or two. But his preparation, his teaching, his coaching has been just superb. Uh, the linebackers that come out of Penn State are so well-skilled. They step right in and start in the pros. Yes, I've noticed so many linebackers oh. come, as you say, come straight out of Penn State and they make yes, an they impact in, oh. in, in the big league. And they do it and do it immediately. And year after year, they have this outstanding defense, don't they? Whatever happens yeah. with the Nittany Lions, yeah. they've always got a tough defense. I think the reason they lost the first two ball games is probably because they had a couple starters as sophomores, and that's tough to do. You, they always say if you've got a sophomore starter, you're going to lose a ball game. Wayne, let's bring you in briefly. How do you see today's game going? Well, certainly they've got to redress the situation about Last week, Andy Kelly passed for 399 yards, and they lost. Uh, Lou Holtz has got to do something about his, his secondary because uh, he can't keep giving up over 400 yards in passing and uh, nick a win in the end. So I think that's where he's got to improve. He's good against the run. He's got to do something about the pass. As we see a telling stat there, the Lions are sick of the nation in stopping the run. I wonder what Lou Holtz will have to say about that, John. Well, <laughs> gosh, uh, what they've got to do is contain play what we call contain football. They've got to keep the rocket inside. If they let him outside, which happened in that one run against Tennessee, the cornerback came came up to support, got caught inside, and that's all, all it takes for him to go down the sideline and score. Now Wayne and I are big fans of the rocket, and we think he should be the Heisman winner. What about what about you? Well, How do you rate him? Well, there are some outstanding players all over, and. Uh, uh, you give it to a junior. I don't know whether that's a good policy. I, I tend to think the seniors should well, get it. The game is now underway. Let's go and join our regular commentary crew of Paul Horning and Ted Robinson. Well, it's Kenny Spears and Notre Dame will get good field position after the opening kick from Craig Thea. And Joe Paterno trying to use a little trickier there. They came right out of the huddle and just kicked it as quick as possible. Kicked it to Kenny Spears, and then once again, look where the football is. The ball rests at the 37-yard line. That's pretty good field position to give up because you don't want to kick it to the All-American back there, the Rocket. Ricky Waters starts a tailback behind Rodney Culver, and Waters gets the ball on first down, and he is wrapped up at the 40. Frank Giannetti, 85, at the bottom of that pile. He's the best defensive lineman for Penn State going against this offensive line for Notre Dame that has been the unsung hero of this year's team. There's your offensive backfield, same as usual, with Ricky Waters getting the started tailback off. He's great week last week against Tennessee, 170 yards plus rushing. That's his career Jerome, best. Jerome Bettis, the freshman, is the fullback, leading the blocking here for Waters. And a good tackle in the open field there by Darren Perry. Stops Waters at the 44. The your defensive line for Penn State. They're not very big, but they're quick. Yeah, the outside linebackers are quick there, Givens and McKenzie. Darren Perry, that hero back number nine, made a good open field tackle on Waters. Well, the other Frio 38 is their best linebacker. Penn State in a 4-3. Four down linemen and three linebackers with the safety up close. And they're changing it. I think Rick Myers changing it. On third and three, he's going to give it to Tony Brooks. And Brooks has a first down with a good at back at the 50-yard line. A six-yard pickup, and he got three extra with determination. So Brooks in his final game. Look at the cutback. Watch this. He broke a tackle right here, and then he gets hit. Now watch the legs. They keep churning, and he got three extra yards. Well, I'm afraid that's what Penn State's going to see today, Paul. It's yep. not going to be pretty. It's going to be a lot of smash mouth football. Well, we've been talking about it all year long. If Blue Holtz can control the pace of the football game with the running attack, that's what you're going to see. That's double receiver right. The rocket is slotted. And the ball to Brooks. And there's not a whole lot there. Good defense. Penn State stood that up. And those were the inside linebackers, Deanna Frio and Goganis, that stopped Tony Brooks. And they'll give two yards. It'll be second down and eight. You see Lake Dawson, 87, the freshman wide receiver in the game. Splits the bottom of your picture and Ismail in the slot. Two inside linebackers with key to tailback in this high formation. A little option here. Meyer will not get much. The option is what really killed Penn State last year. Tony Rice right. at 140 yards running. And of course the option not as much of a threat this year. So it's going to be third down and eight. 
This is definitely the first passing situation we've come to. Pretty good block right there by Rodney Culver. Rick Meyer cuts back inside, but the pursuit was right on target. Two inside linebackers will be the key for that Penn State defense. Now third and eight at the Penn State 48. Meyer with time, drills it out. Tony Smith is open, 30-yard line, first down. Good downfield throw over the middle. That's the same pattern other teams have been doing in Notre Dame. And you know what? They actually, uh, look at big number 86 right there, Derek Brown. He went out in a pattern that time. He did a little sideline pattern, and he was open for a minute, and Rick Meyer went back. Now, look, I think he's looking at him right here. You see look to the left? Good pass protection right in the pocket. And, Paul, that's the pass Meyer has not been comfortable throwing this year from the straight drop position. Lou Holtz likes him. Meyer likes to throw rolling out. Rocket on a reverse misdirection gets about two yards. And it'll be second down and eight at the 28 at Penn State. Nobody has scored more 21 points against Penn State this year. That was Syracuse and Boston College each got 21 against them. Well, the matchups, the speed. Notre Dame with the speed on the offense. And Penn State's defense not known for speed, so that sometimes like right here. Look at that. Oh, there's another good tackle. And Penn State did a nice job tackling. See, he got eight yards before anybody was around for the tackle. That was Darren Perry again. Number nine, he was a, an option quarterback himself when he came to Penn State. A good hit on Waters, and it'll be third down and two. Irv Smith, one of the tight ends, checks in. Now they go into a double tight end. Tony Smith comes out. Full house. With Bettis in the middle, Sean Davis, and Waters on third and two. And it's going to be topped off. Good cutback by Waters! Touchdown, Notre Dame! Was that a hole off the left side or what? Oh, Ricky Waters. 404 yards and that big game against Tennessee and he picks up just where he left off. His eighth touchdown of the year. 22 yards off the left side, kid. And one Notre Dame tradition that they wish would stop occurring now. They've done this for a long time here throwing oranges at the student body now onto the field, symbolizing the Orange Bowl bid that Notre Dame is poised to accept next week. And Coach Holtz is on the field now. Yeah, that's really bad. And he and he's telling the students that. Lou doesn't realize they've been doing that a lot for a lot, lot longer than he's been here. <laughs> but I don't blame him. There's no, re no reason yeah. for that. So Hendrick will kick the extra point now. It's a good thing they don't play in the steel bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Can't throw cotton. <laughs> and the extra point, good. So Notre Dame takes the opening kickoff, goes 63 yards. Waters with a touchdown, and Notre Dame leads 7-0. As we pause now for a regional break. Sports Channel America's coverage of... Uh, from the Fighting Irish, they lead 7-0. Uh, let's have a look at some of the action. Here's Tony Brooks, first of all, John. Well, they missed that uh, tackle there in the hole, but uh, two players get caught inside. And then That's they take the to the air as well. This is uh, Myra looking for Tony Smith. Well, he looked off real well to the tight end, got single coverage back over here, and uh, able to hit a common uh, a slot pattern. This is just great running. Actually, the play entry wasn't too bad defensively by the 11 people, but he just made a great cut. Well, we just, uh, just saw, saw there, we've just missed the kickoff. Let's have another look at that, uh, Wade. Yes, uh, he's making an, an excellent cutback against the scene there, and the linebacker came in on a stunt, but uh, he just, Waters just outran him, and just a great play by Waters. Now, John, this has got to be superb news for Coach Holt, because as we all know, it is so tough to run on the Nittany Lions, and oh. they've more or less done what they wanted in that opening drive there. They, they certainly did, only one pass. That's right. Anyway, let's see if Penn State can respond. This is a first down pass that just goes over the head of the receiver. So Penn State coming up with an overthrow there as we just go through their offensive 
alignment. Let's go over and rejoin Ted and Paul. Oh, if you're a little bit slow and you're not big, then you're really in trouble. Right. You know? Tony Saka, a junior quarterback from Delran, New Jersey, heavily recruited by Notre Dame. Good. But he has had an inconsistent three years at Penn State. Winding up his junior year. Second and ten, a little blitz. Show and give to Leroy Thompson to the tailback. A blitz. How about that, huh? Did you tell the uh, coach on the show last week yeah. that, that Harding wants you to blitz every down, did you? What Lou, said, Lou said that he wanted to know what Paul Horning wanted with that defense, and I said, Paul wants you to blitz. Every On down. Every down. <laughs> well, Another name. There's your defensive line, which has been there all year long. Chris Sorich is on the nose tackle now. He's not 100%, but you just can't keep him out of the lineup, Ted. Uh, he's the kind of kid that, uh, you know, just if he can walk, he'll play. Third and ten. Four receivers had a lot of time, and now sack and a try and run, and Scott Kowalkowski, who's lining up as a down lineman on this first series, makes the tackle. And that was good coverage downfield by the pass defense, which is, uh, if anything, that's been the Achilles heel for that Notre Dame defense. Everybody was covered, and a four-man pass rush, and that's very key, I think, Ken. They got Kowalkowski and Devon McDonald. He'll be in a four-point, a uh, three-point stance rushing the quarterback today. Now, uh, Doug Kelkowski to punt it. Rocket is deep. And a low line uh -oh. drive. You better be careful here. Actually, that punt was so low, the blocking couldn't set up. And Rocket got to the 41-yard line. Still a 12-yard run back. And Notre Dame will start at the 41. Early first quarter, Irish lead at 7-0. favor of the Irish. Now, John, Penn State have a very balanced at attack, but uh, they weren't given a chance in that opening session there. No, the uh, overthrow on that initial pass, uh, but the fine field position that uh, Notre Dame has gotten uh, on the opening kickoff, and now again, the 37, the 41. That's right. Wayne, they certainly look fired up, don't they? Both sides of the ball, the yeah. Irish. Yes, uh, certainly defensively. It's unusual to see them go out blitzing in the first series. And it was uh, unusual to see uh, the young quarterback overthrow his wide receiver, Terry Smith, there on an out pattern. But it's good to see Scott Kowalkowski. I mean, we we talk so much about Zorich and Stonebreaker, but uh, here's a guy that's, I think, played 37 consecutive games. We never talk about the guy, but he came up with a big play there. Yes, he did. Good tackle. They had a stunt going inside on that pass rush on third down and and uh, forced the quarterback to run with the ball. He's, uh, he's your old pal. Yeah, Joe. You know, we were in the hula bowl at one time together. In fact, my children were babysitting on his children. <laughs> Remember it well. <laughs> you don't look old enough, Joe. <laughs> so it's 7-0 to Notre Dame against Penn State. That's just the start they wanted. Penn State, a very tough proposition, as we can see. A stat on the Irish. They lead, they're lead. they 11th in the nation, scoring 34 points a game. And they've made a solid start here with seven from their first possession. And they take over on their own 41. in the slot and here's what happens now he's trying to go down he slips and that of course forced the quarterback out he's still open but he didn't see the free safety over there really had him uh, covered quite well and that's Gary and Perry second and ten with Waters the tailback fullback is Culver just got tripped up at the line and fell forward to gain a couple Godinus 42 inside linebacker where Penn State made the hit. And it's going to be third down and six for the Irish. And Ismail comes back in. It's interesting, Paul, to listen to the controversy, and not controversy so much as discussion all week long from different parts of the country about his Heisman hopes. Some people think they won't vote for him because he doesn't touch the ball enough. Well, I don't, I don't know how you can penalize him for that. I don't know if that is a good reason at all not to vote for somebody. I voted last week. Dumps it on. Nice catch by Derek Brown. No. Look at here. The tight end of the 32 of Penn State. Is he something or what? He's like 
a big runaway truck when he gets a hold of the football. You're looking at number one draft choice. I don't care if he catches three, three catches a year. Gary Brown, the big tight end, is a definite threat when he catches the football. He just runs over people. There's a little delay over the middle. Look at those hands. There, right here. Breaks a tackle. Two. Perry's just trying to bring him down. He drags him another eight. 23-yard pick. And a nice play, because I think that was a secondary receiver. He's looking at Culver running down the near side. Here's Culver running up the middle. And that's going to be about a nine-yard game. Well, Notre Dame looks good offensively today. Early going, they haven't had too much problem offensively. Offensive line blocking well, and it uh, seems like everything's working. In every game this year, except Michigan State, the Notre Dame offense has not been stopped. They stopped themselves against Stanford. Right. And Michigan State's the only defense that has stopped Notre Dame this year. Boy, Culver's putting together a great year statistically. 630 yards, he's averaging five yards a pop. Well, that play is not going anywhere as Meyer dives forward. He's going to be just a bit shy of the first down stick. Be third down and about a foot. With that much time remaining in the first quarter, Notre Dame leading 7 0 and trying to add to it. Uh, this is a situation here where the defense wants it measured. They know it's not a first down. Just gives them a little break. And you can see it's about a foot. The ball is about a foot short of a first down. On third down, if you know Lou Holtz, this is a two down sequence here. He hopes it's not. That's right. One of the great men in college football history right there. Joe Paterno, what a great coach. Winningest active coach with the retirement of Moshe Beckler after last year. Quarterback Steve. Meyer keeps it. Looks like he got enough for the first down. And it is first down for Notre Dame. Watching this game today also forces you to think about the fact that this series, which has been a very good one during the 80s, is going to end. In 1993, Penn State has joined the Big Ten Conference, and they're going to start playing conference football games in 93, and the first team they dropped to get in the Big Ten was Notre Dame. Notre Dame was gracious enough to discontinue the series early. Here's Waters on first down. Getting outside, look at the speed again, and Waters, despite the fact that Penn State strung that playoff fairly well, gets eight yards down to the 13. I tell you, Perry's all over the place. Darren Perry, the the safety, you see him right there. He's been in on almost every tackle. Yep. This kid is a good football player. Now watch the speed here. Look, he just throws it in a little high gear here with the high step. There's Perry on the pursuit. And he's been the defensive savior here in the first quarter. But still Notre Dame with second and two at the Penn State 13. And that's the key, second and two. You pick up eight on first down, you're gonna beat somebody. You usually beat them bad too. Look, look at the hole, Brooks. Touchdown, Notre Dame! Oh, they look strong today. This is the best they've looked, I think, in the first two series of any football game. I mean, they uh, look powerful today, don't you think, Ted? The offensive line has been superb. And they look ready. They look happy to be home. And they've powered the ball down on the ground, ex almost exclusively on the ground, for two touchdowns. And seniors scoring both. 12-yard pickup. Tony Brooks. 59 yards on the drive, and here is Hendrick. Jim Sexton on the hold. Craig Jim Hendrick Sexton is the holder. And Craig Hendrick moves another extra point through. So, 14-0 to the Irish, and here's tough Penn State, the team you can't run on. None of they were running on them. They're sure doing a great job of blocking up front. There isn't any doubt of it, but the running backs, Waters and Culver, are outstanding in picking that initial hole and then having the quickness to get through. Well, let's take a look at some of the key plays in that scoring drive. And uh, first of all, I think we're going to see big Derek Brown. And John, you were talking about poor tackling here. Yes, it's a delay pattern, a very simple play. The tight end sets up as if it's a uh, blocking uh, assignment, and then they drop it to him but uh, that tackling wasn't very good. 
He's a big man, but uh, he should have been brought down. And here's Ricky Water showing a good yeah, turn of pace. See, this is containment again. You can't let the, the cornerback in coming up to force has got to be sure he doesn't get outside. That was eight yards there for Ricky Waters. And here's Tony Brooks. Yeah, just a nice hole and a quick break and into the end zone. Gosh, that, that is just great blocking up front. Now, last year, the Irish racked up 425 yards on the ground against uh, the, uh, the Disney Lions, and that was the most that uh, Penn State had ever conceded. Uh, has, has Lou Holtz seen something, do you think? Well, they, they're playing a lot of gap defenses up front, and that, uh, that'll create a, some daylight if you can see it. And, of course, the backs are hitting the holes beautifully. As I see, talking of daylight, I mean, uh, Tony Brooks has got all the, all the daylight he needs there, Wade. Yes, he seen that beautifully, and it was a very, very good play by Brooks, who's a senior who's trying to make his impact in here behind Culver, and he's certainly making his way there today. John, you've been in this situation at this level, coach to this level. What would you do in Joe Paterno's position now? Well, you just got to play your, uh, your own game, but they've got to control the ball better. Of course, when you don't make a first down and then give up the field position of the 31, even though it's the, or the minus 37, minus 41, you can't give up that kind of field position, allow them to start at midfield. Well, starting uh, off the second possession for the Nittany Lions as we see the kick and it's uh, a low line drive it causes some problems but uh, Penn State managed to fall on the ball it's really a really feature of the uh, the game so far these strange kicks there's confirmation of that last run the 12 yard run eight plays 59 yards just took two and a half minutes the extra point of course was good and uh, tony brooks going in on a 12 yard run the kicking the kickoffs are not as consistent as we see uh as we see brooks going in again the kicking is not as consistent as you see in the pros at this level is it no no they're not trying to kick deep for some reason they're trying to keep the ball away from somebody I don't know who Penn State has that it's been a breakaway runner on a kickoff, but, but they're kicking the ball flat. Well, Penn State getting a pass off this time and completing the pass as well. That's Al Golden making the reception. Anyway, we've got quite a half-time package for you to look forward to as well this game. At the half-time interval, we'll have the first half highlights. Then we'll be taking a nose around and see what's been going on elsewhere in the nation as well. We've got a profile of Todd Light and then uh, letting you know what we've got coming up next weekend as well. So plenty to look forward to in our half-time show here, which uh, should come up in uh, an hour and a quarter or so. So anyway, the Nittany Lions up and running for the first time. Let's rejoin Ted Robinson and Paul Horning. Leroy Thompson is to the Notre Dame 45. See, if you're Penn State like we were talking about, Ted, you're on the offense, and you watched Notre Dame's game films last week against that Tennessee, uh, against the game at Tennessee, you, uh, you know, you're sitting in the uh, film room and you're looking at that Notre Dame defense. Tennessee got, what, 525 yards in offense. You've got to start licking your chops. You've got to say, say, listen, this may be the number one team, but we could move the football on this defense. Notre Dame is playing freshman. Willie Clark is the free safety in this game. He's starting in that position. Rod Smith starting at a cornerback. Four-man rush, pass out is caught. That's David Daniels, and he has a first down to the Notre Dame 34. Correct, that's Sam Gash who made that catch, the fullback. It's the fullback. Like you say free safety, I was watching Willie Clark, as you mentioned him, and he lines up about 12 to 13 yards deep to snap the football. He goes back, watch him. There he is, 32. I mean, he is way deep, and of course, they go right underneath in that soft zone. Sam Gash, easy first down, he only needed a yard. First down at the Notre Dame 34. You'll see that again, I'm sure. That's Daniels up top against Rod Smith. And Saka runs over the quarterback draw and says hello to Chris Zorich. I'll tell you, Zorich last week, you know, he wasn't really a force in the game. But for a guy playing on one leg, what a presence. Anytime a guy shows that much guts and determination, he's out there playing hurt. You don't think that helps your teammates. You look over and you say, look at this guy. He shouldn't even be out here. But he's got so much heart, and he's the kind of guy that inspires the people around him. And that's what Chris Dorich, he is a determined football player. Second and eight, Notre Dame 32. And a blitz. But Penn State picks it up, and that ball is skipped in, though, to Terry Smith. But see, that, that little blitz causes the quarterback 
to hurry the throw a little bit. Uh, didn't get the quarterback. Here comes the blitz over the left guard. You'll see him show up right here. No, this was the play before that. This is called a quarterback draw. And uh -uh. not for Chris Storage. Oh, it's going to be third and eight for Penn State now at the Irish 32. Now, here's the down that's destroyed Notre Dame all year. They get teams in third and eight and yep. can't put them away. But they're in a blitz here. Baker reverse. And Sackis got Smith open downfield. He's got him, and he is in for a touchdown on a great catch by Terry Smith. Oh, just a great individual play by Saka. They faked the reverse. Notre Dame was in a blitz, putting pressure on the quarterback. And Saka puts it right there, 32-yard touchdown pass. Beautiful pitch and a great catch. He beat Todd Light down the sideline. Made a sensational catch, kept his balance, and sprung into the end zone. We'll take another look in a minute. Well, I tell you, third and eight, third and ten, third and twelve, and Notre Dame just absolutely snake bit. They can't Hayek stop anybody. The point after. And Hayek kicks the extra point for Penn State. Craig Fayek, a freshman, and at 4:29 to play in the first quarter, it is now Notre Dame 14, Penn State seven. More offense galore. Another 32-yard pass, and John, we've seen it all year. Teams can beat Notre Dame in the air. Mm -hmm. See, the fake reverse uh, really held the defense. The receiver started across and then broke back to the corner and got open. Great catch. Well, a smart play as well, and yes. uh, well, well executed. It's very timely. They had to come up with a score. Uh, given you can't spot Notre Dame 14 points and not come back and get something. Is that straight out of Joe Paterno's playbook, or would that be one of his assistants? No, that uh, that'd be a standard play. Uh, fake reverse pass. Uh, I think everybody has it in the playbook somewhere. Now that they do have this vulnerability uh, in the air. We've seen it all year. We saw Stanford, of course, exploit yes. it to perfection. What do you think the problem is? Well, you're not getting a rush on the quarterback. Uh, in that particular case, he just had a lot of time, and when he stepped up and avoided the si single rusher that was in there, why, well, see, see how much time he's got to throw this ball? That allows that uh, receiver to go down in the secondary and really go to work. That's a great play, great effort. I'm not so sure he wasn't down just before he got in the end zone, but it's still a great play. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt. It's Terry Smith, by the way, we, uh, we believe not Tony Smith, but uh, let's see if the Rocket is going to launch himself. Notre Dame leading by, and once again, they've, uh, they're scared of the Rocket, aren't they? Uh, well, it, it, you know, sometimes you're better off to go ahead and kick it deep, because look at this. They, they're they just giving up uh, just terrible field position. You can't allow that first first down to be given up on the kickoff, and it's happened all the time. Let's just have a look at this touchdown pass from another angle here. Let me see Saka with all the time in the world. See how he went uh, across and then broke back? Mm -hmm. he normally wouldn't get that much time. Not often you see light. Well, he was down, wasn't he? Yes. Sure, you're right. He was, he, was, he was a good yard away. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's 14-7 to the Irish. Ricky Waters, the ball carrier, on first down. That's Richard McKenzie, 99. And was the key man there on the hit. Darren Perry also. Man Perry again. We talk about those kickoffs, Paul. I think the rule changes made a lot of difference. It was moving the kickoffs back to the 35 in college football. It's uh, preventing kickers from just booting it out of the end zone. That's right. We've seen that so much. I don't know, and it's psychological with kickers. They boot it out of the end zone. They say, if you move back to 35, you ought to kick it five yards deep. But that doesn't happen. Option pitch to Waters, and he's brought down. Good defense. Waters wants a flag. Yep. He wants a flag. <laughs> Willie Thomas piled on late there, but no flag, and it's going to be third and long for the Irish. Ball just shy of the Notre Dame 42-yard line. Derek Bonna, a true freshman, starting at cornerback for Penn State. He's lined up against Lake Dawson at the bottom of your screen. But they got his own. He's wide open. Let's, oh, Meyer. Boy, what a pitch that is by Meyer. Ismail with the catch for a first down. But again, now, Meyer knew he was going to get crushed, and he did, and he still hung in there and delivered that ball. I tell you, it was good coverage that time. Leonard Humphreys had the coverage on the rocket. Watch this. Here he is right here coming over the middle. Good coverage. He times he's hit good. Good catch by the rocket. You can't cover him any better than that. 
Just failed at the catch ball last week. But Meyer knew he was going to get hit by Richard McKenzie, and he stood in there through the pass. 50 to go in the quarter. Gonna throw another one. Go down the field. The Rockets out there. Just overthrow. Oh, he wants that one. He knew that was six. The Rockets, Randy's post pattern. Nobody's going to keep up with him. He caught him in a perfect defense. Man to man. Now watch the Rockets. He's licking his chops right now. He knows he's just going to run right by him. That was Leonard Humphreys again. He covered him last time, set him up with the little hook pattern, and then he ran a post right by him. And look at Rick Meyer. He knows this is six. He cannot believe it was a little overthrown. Well, it's second and ten at midfield. Quick hand off to Brooks. And nice job by Brooks. Darting and dancing through the middle of the line, and he gets the ball to the 44 at Penn State. Gauguin is on the hit, third and four coming up. You know, it's kind of funny, Paul. I remember back to our first game here two months ago, sitting in the stadium wondering about Rick Meyer. That ended pretty quickly, didn't it? It sure did. He's had a wonderful year. He's quarterback in Notre Dame. Eight victories and one loss, and he's just been sensational. He's shown a great poise. And I want to tell you something. I think the Rock will win the Heisman, and I also think, as Ricky Waters gets the first down, I also think that Rick Meyer will win the Heisman for his How about that? Wow. You think the Rockets going to win the Heisman this year? Absolutely. It's funny, we finished that point we talked about earlier. I've heard some voters, read some things, voters around the country saying they, they're they going to hold it against this male that he doesn't run the ball 30 times a game like the enemy at Colorado. Well, see, he's not a running back. And and that's, a lot of people forget that. He's a flanker. Nobody changes a game like this one. No, nobody. Culver, uh, first down inside the 35. Deanna Frio, 38, makes the hit for Penn State. The U.S. Sprint presents the U.S. Olympic Showcase on Sports Channel America, the Soviet National Basketball Tour, and it wraps up at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse on Monday night. Exclusive coverage live at 7.30 Eastern on Sports Channel America. That is second and six. The Penn State 34 trips left, and Meyer changing at the line. Movement. Nobody, no flags. Look like offside. Meyer takes a hit. Deanna Frio nails him as Meyer is looking down for William Pollard. Now that's what happens when you change the play a lot in college. A lot of people miss it. They just are not used to picking it up. And you see Meyer over in the sideline. Here's your linebackers here. It's your Johnson on the outside. Here comes your inside linebacker makes a spot on Rick Meyer. It was Mark Deanna Frio. You want to hear something? He's a kid that's been benched by Joe Paterno earlier this year because he's too exuberant on the field. He's getting late hit penalties. Usually don't, usually don't like to curb that in your football players. Third down and 11, everybody out. And open down the middle. And Meyer to the 35-yard line is it. And it's going to be a tough choice now for Lou Holtz because a field goal here would be better than 50 yards. And they need about seven for a first down. You don't really want to punt when you're at 35 either. But Lou Holtz will get a quarter break to think about his decision. And as Notre Dame changes ends of the field, they'll have the wind at their back, which may affect the way that Holtz chooses to approach it also. After one quarter, Notre Dame 14, End State 7 will return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages. The Fighting Irish at the top of the second quarter. Let's have a look at some of the action that's got them to this situation. First of all, it's the Rocket. He held that ball very nicely in here and then delivered it late and took a real hit. That, that's well thrown. But a slot cleared it out and uh, as the wide man, he came underneath. Now they jump into single coverage. They probably sent the safety over to the tight end side and he had uh, Adam beat. Oh gosh, I'd I'd hate to be the cornerback playing him man for man. No, but uh, here's one occasion where it uh, didn't quite go according to plan. No, this was a great play by the linebacker. Got outside the tackles block. 
So that brings up an interesting fourth and seven. And as we've said, it's uh, almost a, a waste of a play to punt it from there, but it's a long field goal. John, what would you do in this situation? Oh, I tend to pooch the punt, uh, just kick it up high and see if we couldn't recover it inside the 10 yard line. I, I'm more inclined to be a little conservative here and, and just force uh, Penn State to make a long drive. But obviously, Coach Paterno must be a little bit happier now. Um, he's uh, he's seen his offense get on track, and he's seen his defense start. The defense finally uh, uh, stopped them, but I think they weren't they lined up for a long field goal. I didn't. Well, uh, we'll uh, soon know. It could be uh, a little bit of Lou Holtz trickery. I'm not sure. It does look indeed as if they're getting ready for what would be a hefty 53-yard field goal. That's going to be. Let's go over and uh, find out what's happening. just off so Penn State holds and they'll take over with good position in their 35 it, yard line caught it a little bit low Ted uh, usually when a kicker comes up short like that the ball doesn't explode off his foot so I think he kicked it a little bit lower than he wanted to as we take a look at the first quarter statistics and without that one play for Penn State a great catch by Terry Smith it was all Notre Dame for heaven's sakes he only had the football three and a half minutes Saka at first down as Terry Smith go in motion. Pitch to Leroy Thompson. Whoa, Leroy Thompson has a first down. So suddenly Penn State getting its offense on court. And Thompson, you know where he's from? Knoxville, Tennessee. How did he get away from the balls? Here's the pitch out of the eye. The fullback does the job up in front. Right there, everybody's controlled the line of scrimmage. Big bad Leroy got a, a first down for Penn State. And it was Willie Clark, freshman free safety, made the tackle. First down, Chip LaBarca in motion. And they'll try Thompson this way. Stonebreaker got blocked, and there's more good yardage for the Notre Dame 45 before Clark has to come up again. Now, when your tailback is running and the free safety's making tackles, you know you're, right. you're not doing the right job. Stonebreaker had a force on the inside, got hooked. Stonebreaker wanted, and you'll also see Todd Light, both of them in the running for some of the great awards in college football. Todd Light for the secondary award, Jim Thorpe Award, and of course, Stonebreaker, I think, is in the final of the Butkus Award. Sorich is not in on this series. Eric Jones playing up front for Notre Dame. Four down line, second and three. And it's Sam Gash running and reversing, and Andre Jones makes a big saving tackle, or else Gash might have been able to get back to the short side. Zorich watching this series, a lonely figure. Now, Notre Dame doesn't have great speed with those third down linemen either, but what happens, Gash tries to come back against the quickest of those down men, and that's Andre Jones. You're not going to outrun him. That's third down and four at the Notre Dame 46. And the defense here looking at him to come up with a big play and a stop. No pressure, and that one's caught by Thompson out of the backfield, and he has a first down. Stonebreaker. The coverage at the 39 yard line. There's that little underneath pattern. They cleared it out. Thompson cut back to the inside. You see everybody dropping back. Right there. Andre Jones is on the outside, and you'll see Stonebreaker come back with the block to get the tackle. Penn State had thrown the ball a lot to running backs, but neither had Tennessee before last week's game. That's obviously a play that's hurt the Irish. There's one way overthrown. That's the first ball thrown to David Daniels in the game, and it's way overthrown. Daniels, their top receiver. And he's second down and 10. Notre Dame defense balls, but how... They played a lot of football. Tennessee ran 92 plays from scrimmage last week. And uh, any coach will tell you, if you run 92 plays on offense, you usually come out on top. Just a number. Thompson. Out 
outside. Good play by Greg Davis, flashing up from a strong safety spot. Continuing what has been an awfully good tackling year for Greg Davis. It likes to hit. And he's the real sticker in that secondary, too. Greg Davis, watch him. You see Willie Clark, he's playing the free safety. Right here, good tackle. Whoever takes Greg Davis's place next year in that secondary has got to be tackling because Notre Dame is about the only guy back there. It's been a strong sound tackle. Third and 11 now. A sophomore big guy, 6'3, 213, running the pattern. So Notre Dame does get a stop on third and long yardage. Well, I didn't like the choice of plays there for Penn State. You got third and 10, he went for the home run. And Notre Dame, of course, back in that zone defense, everybody kind of playing a zone back there deep. And anywhere where they're soft, they've been soft where? Over the middle and about in the 15 yard zone. So Doug Helkowski will be back. The punt, Rocket is back deep, but if Elkowski does his job here, Rocket would not get a chance to run this back. Well, he hangs that up there, and the Rocket took a fair catch at the eight-yard line. So Notre Dame will be pinned back deep when we return. Notre Dame leading 14-7. We're of the Irish here at Notre Dame Stadium, and uh, a little bit of evidence, perhaps, that... Uh, Defenses on uh, both teams' parts are starting to uh, make a bit of an impression on this uh, game. Well, let's take a look now at one of the danger men for Penn State, Leroy Thompson, in action. The delay pattern, as uh, they indicated, the wide receiver just clearing it out and allowing the back who's in a set position to delay and cross over the middle. Now you, uh, Wayne, you have uh, a lot of time for Leroy Thompson, don't you? You reckon he could be a danger man today? He certainly can uh, outrun people and run over people at the same time, so he's a double threat when it comes to Penn State. And so often you see a, a player that can outrun people but it doesn't guts it up the middle, but that player, he will take on anybody. But, John, we've got a situation here where the Irish are deep inside their own territory on around about their own seven or eight yard line, so it's a vital series coming up for the uh, Nittany Lions defensively, isn't it? Yes, if they could hold them here, why, well, they'd have excellent field position, at least at midfield. Do you get the impression, well, obviously, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll come back and talk about that later, John, because it looks like the Irish are ready to take the snap. First down, deep in their own territory. Now, he's, of course, he's playing tailback here. And he gets the ball. Good tackle. Nice play on the Penn State front by Eric Brevetti. Outside linebacker as the Rocket could not get outside. He gains about a yard. Tennessee found out about the Rocket last week, though, because they really stopped him. The entire game, three minutes to go. Oh. That one sweep, which Tennessee said they played on defense exactly the way they wanted to, and he still scored a touchdown. But see those two punt returns, that he, the two 40-yard punt returns, one was called back with the clip. You know, if they put some points on the board there, the game's over. Got inside the 10-yard line twice. Second and nine, Waters. Boy, that's a lot of bad job there. Very little room. Waters danced for three, and it'll be third and six. So a little field position game here being played, and we'll see if Holtz... Well, they've always been, they, they played a real kind of tentative uh, under these circumstances down here with the passing game. Third and six here, we got a throwing situation, but will it be in Holtz's offense? Normally, uh, he don't throw the football. Since Tony Smith's foot wide left, Ismail slot left, Waters the tailback, Bennis the fullback. Yes, sir. Look at the Rockets wide open. And he's got it. First down, Notre Dame, 25-yard line. And Meyer did a nice job there of waiting for Rocket to really cross the field. That's perfect, Ted. That's exactly the key. He waited for him to clear the linebacker, and then he put it right there. Beautiful. Beautiful wait on him. And a great read, I guess we should say, for Rick Meyer. And so the Irish out of the hole at the 25 with a first down. To play in the first half. 14-7 Notre Dame. Waters. They're really playing that tailback. They had Reggie Givens about five yards deep 
before Waters really got his hands on the football on the pitch. It was just a read. He's playing outside. He sees the pitch to the tailback with Waters. Comes right up. Two sticks, Tommy. Two sticks. And that'll be a loss of a yard. To make it second down and 11. Waters 56 yards already after 174 last week. Career high at Tennessee. Play fake to Brooks. Off at the time, and the underneath ball is dropped by Jerome Bettis coming out of the backfield. Now he had a couple of people open here. Derek Brown was open about a, down at the 40-yard line, and he saw his back wide open. That would have been a first down. Yep. There goes Derek Brown. Good fake. Good pass protection. He sits in that pocket, picks him out, looks it over. Bettis missed Third down will be the call here. Third and 11 for the Irish from their 24. I like to see him get it to that big tight end. He's out. On the rocket. Good catch at midfield by Ismail. First down, Notre Dame. Show you, showed you the strength of that arm, too, Ted. He, he rolled out to his left, put it right on the money, 25 yards downfield. A little back against the green, too. There's the rocket. That's his third catch today. There it is. It's a deep. Now, he's double covered there. You, there you see it. Look and at the respect for how much they backed right. up for sure. him. And that's why he's going to be open underneath all day long. Now, when you catch him man-to-man, -man, that's the time when he can run by him. Reverse here, and they give it to Ismail. And the play goes for about five. So Notre Dame has had the ball four times, and they've gotten it into Penn State territory on each possession. Ismail running to the 45 of Penn State. The Rockets got three catches for 48 yards. They'll slot now left with Ray Griggs wide left. Waters the tailback. See, they put Perry over there, number nine. He'll be one man on him. Over inside, not much and short of a first down. Notre Dame is just controlling the football with these sustained drives. Penn State hasn't had the football over six minutes this whole ballgame. Oh, Notre Dame will have third down and two. Here at the Penn State 42 with Ismail split. Now see, right here, you'd get him in a man-to-man -man situation. If you put the tight end down the field, you would have the rocket in a man-to-man -man on the outside. Two tight ends in the game, and a quick hit run to Culver, and that's a first down. You don't want to throw up there when you've got a running attack like Notre Dame. 36-yard line of Penn State, Willie Thomas out of the secondary made the tackle for the Nittany Lions. Notre Dame gets inside the 20. And there you see Penn State doing all it can. And just a great hole off the right side. Needed a couple of yards. Culver got it. So first down at the Penn State 36. Meyer got that ball back. Meyer uh, tried to yeah. fall on it. Penn State says it's theirs. And the officials say no, it is Notre Dame football. Take a look at it. Ground level, there's the ball. Ooh, I don't, he's still, yeah, he's got it in there. Underneath that pile, Rick Meyer got it back. But the Aaron exchange loses six yards. So this drive's been kind of a, a backwards and forwards drive. Second 16 now. Culver the only setback. Sprint out throw. Good strike and a pitch to Sean Davis for a first down. That's one of the best pitches he's had all year long right there. He rolling left on the run, rolling to his left. Perfect pitch. John Davis caught it full stride. Watch this. Out of the trips, he'll cut to the sideline here. He's in the slot. John Davis, there he is, going by the 25-yard line. Ball is right on the money. 
23 yard pickup. And the Irish have first down now at the Penn State 19. Culver getting almost nothing. Got yeah, a funny thing, Paul, watching this game. We, we focus so much on Ismail as a wide receiver, but all year long, Notre Dame has used anywhere from six to eight different players as wide receivers to throw the ball to all of them. They really have. They've got great receivers. They've got great speed in the receivers. They also have great running backs and great speed in the running backs. So that's where they'll knock the dead right there. And this offensive line has just gotten better and better each week. Now Derek Brown splits wide up oh, to the top of your picture. This? We haven't seen this all year. Second and nine inside Waters. And Waters, first and goal for the Irish. Yeah, he's pumped up too. This is last game here. Take a look at Joe Paterno over at the sidelines. He's not too happy. And I'm sure this guy was recruited heavily oh, by yeah. Penn State. That's Big why he's from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. That's why he's not happy. There it is. A little rollout draw almost. Good blocking up front. Tim Ryan, Merkel, Jerkovic, Mike Helt in the middle of that line doing a job. Winston Sandry's in there at right tackle. First and goal to seven. A rocket on a sweep. Good cutback. A second one, a third one. And the rocket is down just shy of the goal line. Oh, that's the exciting. He's got the whole crowd comes up. They get up every time he touches. Griffey Waters comes in. Watch it. Watch this cut back to the end. This is great instinctive running. Rodney Culver missed his block there, but the rocket almost gets in. He got hit by two men at the two yard line. Full house backfield on second and goal. And Culver just down, inches shot. Inch short. And it'll be third and goal. Sean Davison now with the play from Holtz. It'll be Culver in front of Brooks. Two tight ends. And Meyer keeps it and he's in. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Sneaks it in. And that is a 92-yard drive for a touchdown. Well, it showed you a little something right there. They needed a good long sustained drive, a couple of key third down. There it is right there. You see the guy playing on the nose went to his left and opened up a little crack in that defense. Rick Meyer snuck right in behind it. There it is. And the linebacker just couldn't get there in time. That was Keith Boganis. It's through the extra point. He is perfect this year. So with just five minutes left in the, in the first half, it's a nice healthy scoreline for the Irish. They lead 21-7. And a very impressive 92-yard drive there, John. Well, some key third down passes. Uh, when you get a team on the eight-yard line, you've just got to keep them right there and make them punt. Well, let's have a look at some of the action from the drive. Here's the, here's the pass. Reception, first of all, from number 17, Davis. He has that single coverage on the slot, and they, uh, they just hook up the outside receiver and send the other one to the flag. Uh -huh. This is great running, isn't this uh, something? Look at that cutback. And you can't arm tackle him, even though he's a small guy. He's got a lot of power. Yeah, he's just a little fella, but uh, he knows what to do when he gets the ball, and... Uh, I think, John, before the uh, the play there, you said quarterback sneak, didn't you? Oh, yes. If you're that close, you always uh, don't take a chance on handing the ball to anybody. You just go behind your offensive line. We usually pick a spot either outside of the guards or perhaps in the, just depending on what they've shown a tendency to do in that short a situation. I've been, I've been listening to you during the broadcast, John, and uh, unfortunately some of our viewers can't can't hear what you're saying but um, you're calling the offensive play and then you're calling the defensive play is, is, is it that you know the two coaches that well that you're sort of guessing what they're going to do and <laughs> you're right more often than not well no it's probably just instincts on the part of a coach who's been doing it for 40 years mm -hmm. 
it's not so much a question of you no. you know the minds of these two guys yeah. have they done anything that surprised you so far uh, no uh, uh, not really uh, I've been impressed with the uh, fact that Notre Dame hasn't made any mistakes they got one bad snap the quarterback uh, fumbled it but uh, outside of that why uh, they've been just flawless Yes, they certainly have. And uh, when you stop to think, uh, Wayne, there hasn't been a penalty, has there? No, it's been a very clean-fought game and uh, good hard tackling, and uh, everyone's played by the rules. And as we see the kick there, down for a touchback. And, uh, Wayne, what do you think of it so far? I think it's a good, typical Eastern Seaboard game with uh, Penn State uh, playing their game plan. Smash nose football, they're going to run the ball and they're going to pass the ball and they're going to play to their game plan. Notre Dame are not going to get them out of that, but Lou Holtz is doing a great job. I wonder how important that drive that we've just seen is going to be when we look at the final analysis of this game, because we both said here's an important series for Penn State, and it was instead the Irish that went 92 yards. But can Penn State respond? They've done it once, let's see if they can do it again with Saka looking to complete a pass and he does there and that's good for a first down a nice 15 yard pickup there on the first down Sam Gash the senior the big fullback picking that up and this is the summary of what happened on the last drive 16 plays 92 yards best part of seven minutes that's the way to win the game control the ball for seven minutes oh and then, uh, yes it is take it in and uh, the one yard run from the quarterback so anyway the uh, Penn State Lions now have another first down on their own 35 in on that tackle Andre Jones as well Notre Dame, are out here. Notre Dame consistently and you see sorry sorry it's not 100% he's got that leg and Notre Dame's defense again giving up four or five yards a pop as we take a look at Tony Thompson Stonebreakers out here. Donnie Grimm and Jim Flanagan are the inside linebacker. Notre Dame consistently been a four down lineman, but we haven't seen that too much. And a blitz. And that pass is caught by Thompson. That'll be a first down. Flanagan was blitzing there, and he was picked up by Sam Gash, the fullback, and the tailback Thompson caught the pass. I don't think Lou Holtz is too surprised, nor is Gary Darnell by this, because again, they've seen teams week after week throw to the backs and the tight end underneath. If you look at the yardage given up by the Notre Dame's pass defense all year, you know, a lot of teams have thrown for over 300 yards, but usually, and that's a, a key statistic also, usually the team that throws for the most yardage loses. Those are always behind. Underneath again to Gash, and that will be a good run. He put his head down there and really pulled forward. He's inside the Notre Dame 45. The Irish didn't, you give that pass up, but they didn't surround the receiver very well once he caught the football. It seems like the defense guys are so cognizant of getting beat deep that they, you know, give a little bit too much ground. Everybody's open uh, in that soft zone underneath. And I'm sure Paterno, uh, after watching the film, said, look, dump it off to your, your, you know, your hot backs. Dump it off to the guys. If they're not open downfield, you're going to see a lot of blue jerseys downfield. If you happen to see it looks like they're uh, covered, look underneath because somebody's going to be open. Well, that's a first down by inches at the Notre Dame 44. Eric Jones up front on this set. Freshman Bryant Young is playing. He's 97 on the down line. Devon McDonald's lined up defensive left end out there. He's a linebacker. George cannot move. Oh, they got a whole side open for Thompson. And there's a big tackle there by Davis again. Greg Davis. Maybe save six, but the ball's inside the Notre Dame 30 as we pause now for a regional break. Sports Channel America's coverage of Notre Dame football continues after these messages. Ah, oh, threatening all that. Michael Stonebreaker's just come up with a big play there. That's put a, it's like the smile off Joe Paterno's face. But uh, these important moments now as we just take another look at this last play. And there we see nowhere to go. It's Michael Stonebreaker. He fills a hole. But uh, there's a flag down, and uh, Stonebreaker just letting everyone know which way it's gone. So uh, we were talking about there's been no penalties, and uh, we put a jinx on the game, and, haven't we? And I think we did. Uh, but it has been a fast-moving first half. Uh, the running game, and, and, and in addition, no injuries. You always knock on wood there, and no penalty. Important that, the, uh, that, that Penn State get in in this series? It is very important. They need to get within one at halftime. 
So time running out for Joe Paterno's Nittany Lions, but they do have the ball and they've got enough time to punch it in at the moment. Notre Dame, of course, leading 21-7. And uh, here comes Tony Saka coming back out. As we can see, the ball is uh, well, pushed almost back to midfield now after that 15-yard penalty. And uh, it's those 15 yarders, especially late on in a quarter, or in a half rather can really hurt you just look at the state of that third and 29 could be a passing play coming up John even I can know what that one out yeah, it, it, <laughs> it'll be a pass but you don't want to try to get it all just get half of it and see what you can do on the final play oh you can't throw it any better than that you've got to catch that ball and that was Al Golden the big tight end of the senior let that one go and uh, so demoralizing and frustrating is now yeah, what, yeah. what do you do to a player in, in that situation when you're the coach i mean do you feel like kicking him up the backside or do you just pat him on the back and say no, mind? no we got a saying you don't critique the performance during the performance we'll talk to him uh, the following day about why he uh, dropped that ball and that it can't happen again but he'll know of course and the punt fourth down the lions hunting and uh, looks like oh they got a bad break on the bounce and yeah, so where they could have used timeouts and uh, gotten the ball back perhaps now they're probably not going to touch the ball again and with and with two minutes 13 left maybe Notre Dame can uh, stick some more points on the board before the half time we'll find out in just a moment we're going to take a break we'll be back in more importantly they've got the ball in pretty good field position with just over two minutes left now these could be important two minutes couldn't they oh yes yeah. so I don't I don't think Notre Dame will uh, get careless with the football if they can get some form of a good run in here and get close to midfield then they'll try to take advantage of it and go down and score otherwise they'd be content to run out the half what's coach Holt got in his mind at this stage just to try and maybe get a field goal or, or go for six? Oh, no, I, I think he's thinking 21-7 to is a good halftime score. I, I don't want to make a mistake down here by being careless. He's got the ball where on the 26-yard uh, line? Yeah, 26 yard six, yeah. yeah, they didn't get a very good punt there, Penn State. No, I, I look for him to stay with the running game. If, if they did break a, a run for a, a good solid first down, then he might go after it. You like to be out around that uh, 35 to 40-yard uh, line before you open up your game. As we just see the comparative play selection there, Penn State passing a lot more, and uh, the Irish running the ball. Let's see if Coach Ralston is correct in his assessment. And that's out to about the 35. So with, with all three of its timeouts remaining, Notre Dame has plenty of time here to do something offensively. They're letting the clock run here as it's about a minute 55, but this is not a two-minute drill, as, as you've heard so no. many times on <laughs> no. television. If it is, it, they'll start to rush it up to get another first down. You know, to get the ball up to around the 45-yard line. Second down is short yardage, and Brooks gets about six more. Uh, here's a point now where if you're at the 41-yard line, you only need to complete two passes right. to, to be in a chance to kick a field goal. Jim Dieter, the nose tackle, made the play for Penn State. Of course, the clock will stop till they move the chains up. They set. Now that here they go. Clock's running now. Notre Dame quickly out of the huddle. Tony Smith and Ismail both go wide left. Waters the tailback behind Culver. The Rockets got two men on him. Tough throw there. And Tony Smith. The intended receiver, Humphreys on the coverage. That's the same ball Meyer threw to Sean Davis on the last drive. And so it'll be second down at 10 now at the 41 of Notre Dame at 1.21 to play in the half. Penn State, of course, is going to a bowl game. They're going to the Blockbuster Bowl, which is headed by an old donor, Bob Kuchenberg. That's right. He's here. saw Bob here today. Playing great Florida career State. he had with the Miami Dolphins also as a captain. And this is Ismail with the ball. Look at the moves. Look at the moves by Ismail. And he's out to midfield. He got 10 yards and he juked about three people on the way. He is something. I tell you, I've said it before. He's, he's the best football player I've ever seen here at Notre Dame in my time. By far, I tell you, this kid's the number one draft choice this year, next year, it doesn't matter when he comes. And he has mentioned before that he will stay. If yeah. Blue Holt stays, he says, I will stay. 
I certainly hope that that's the case, but you wonder what pressures will come into his mind if he does win the Heisman. Third down and one, a minute 12 to play here. The ball's in midfield, and Notre Dame just gets the first down. Culver runs it straight ahead. They pick up the first down, which they know will stop the clock. Well, they move the chain. There it is again, we're gonna take a look. Let's, let's catch it. There's one, he got by one. There's two, there's three. Of course, that guy had no shot at all. There's four, and of course, they knock him out of bounds. Uh, made four pretty good moves, didn't he? I made those yeah. four moves like that. It took yeah. me three four, years. Four years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you splice that together for your highlight. Mm -hmm. right? Pressure from the backside. But still, now Meyer's going to eat the football. They ever had anybody breaking over the middle with wide open. Yep. He didn't have it. Got back to the end. Davis went to the outside where everybody was. And I think Rick Meyer was looking for him to hopefully go back to the weak side. A lot of time burned off there before Notre Dame stops the clock with a timeout. 36 seconds, they have two timeouts left. This is the Holtz tutelage, though, where if there's any question, Meyer just eats the football. He will right. not throw it up there. But, you know, we, we've talked at times this year about the Rocket, the choice he's going to have uh, at the end of the season. Lou Holtz made it pretty plain early in the year. He said, he told Ismail before the season started, if you're thinking at all about leaving school early, then don't play this year. He said, I want you. I don't want anybody who's not totally focused to Notre Dame in this football team. And that's a, you know, it's a, it's one way of looking at it. I don't know if it's uh, completely realistic, but it's the way Lou Holtz has chosen to address the problem. Well, it depends on the individual, and it depends on the school, and it depends on the type of team. He's stated flatly he will be yep. back. And certainly Notre Dame, who, what Notre Dame represents in college athletics, graduating athletes in four years, and you would hope that Ismail would continue in that tradition. You see where he ranks alongside Tim Brown in Tim Brown's Heisman year, but I think that's a little misleading. Tim Brown, by all accounts, didn't have as good a year in his senior year as he did his junior year. Exactly, and you know another thing, nobody has been defensed at Notre right. Dame in exactly. the history of this school like this kid. I mean, you, you, each team that comes against Notre Dame they prepare their whole defense to stop this guy. I mean, you know, and each coach realizes it. this guy gets the football in his hands 15 times, you're dead. You know, he's going to break a couple. I honestly believe if he played tailback the whole season, he'd gain close to 2,000 yards. You know, if he were in a tailback orientated offense or they let him play, you know, they let him run the football 20, 25 times in this offense here. Uh, he'd be the leading, one of the leading rushers in the country. He's that tough. Thirty-six seconds remaining in the half at Notre Dame Stadium, and Notre Dame leading 21-7. Will have second and 15 from their 47 after utilizing their first timeout. Blake Dawson and Ismail will split wide right. And Brooks will be out there as well. Culver, the only back, and he's going out left. A little screen here to Ismail over the middle. Great play. He's outside. Oh, and an outstanding tackle by Willie Thomas to save a touchdown. That was six. What a tackle. That's almost like a little delay screen over the middle with that inside. Flanker. Now he's lined up on the inside in the slot. Here, here it comes. There's your screen. Everybody's up in front. 28-yard pickup. Watch this move right now. Look at that great straight arm. Now right here, just by the ankle, or that was six points. Notre Dame's not doing a good job. Here the clock's running. They have timeouts here. This is not a good job of clock management at all. Boy, they, they may lose. They might even get a field goal off here. And Meyer throws it away wisely. That was just absolutely horrendous management of time and timeouts by Notre Dame because now you're down to seven seconds and Notre Dame still has two timeouts. Yeah, they could have uh, had an incomplete pass Boy. here and there would have been 30, at least 30 seconds still left. They ran off 30 seconds, as Tim said. Now, in college football, we'll, we, we re reiterate this. They do stop the clock till they move the chain, but if you're not ready at the snap of the football, to, as soon as they That's say, right. you know, let's go, 
you still got timeouts left. You're absolutely right. You could have called one. That's a, one of the biggest differences between college and pro football right there. At a school like Notre Dame, they don't work on two-minute drills in clock management. And here you're going to have a, a half end with Notre Dame holding two timeouts. No reason for that. Hendricks' field goal attempt is no good. Well, that's just a shame. Notre Dame had no excuse at all for not coming out of that drive with points. And they get nothing as Hendrick misses the field goal. But it is, again, this is part of the game. They don't work on on when to call timeouts and running the clock down in the final minute. And as a result, you get a, a, a drive that should have had two points more, come away. Nothing. Should have had two more plays. Oh, you know, should have had two or three more. They can't improve on their position. <laughs> <Number one. laughs> That's right. <laughs> They're on the post position, right? right? Running on the rail at number Running one. On the pole. Saka dumps it out, and it's caught by Jerry Collins coming out of the backfield, and he'll get a good gainer up near midfield as the first half ends. Picked up about 25. Well, Notre Dame had three touchdowns and missed two field goals on their five possessions in the half. Dominant offense, they lead 21-7 at halftime at Notre Dame Stadium. We'll have the second half in a moment. Other, but Holtz really seems to have done a number on this occasion, doesn't he? Yes, certainly. He's got them G'd up and playing well. But Penn State get their hands on the ball first here in the second half. Shelly Hammonds, third string tailback out to the 34-yard line, but he's the young man that ran for 208 yards against Boston College this now, year. Very important offensive drive here for Penn State. They only trail by two touchdowns. Notre Dame had the football for over 20 minutes in that first half. Penn State only had it for like nine minutes and 35 seconds. They come right down the football field, put some points on the board, Notre Dame's in for one. Tony Saka. 9 out of 15, Penn State, not much of a running game in the first half. Just 30 yards on the ground. That's what Notre Dame wants. And it's the four-man front. He comes right out with a pass to Terry Smith. Got by Todd Light. And he's out to the 44-yard line. That's going to be right at the first down stick before Devon McDonald made the hit. Here's your first half stats. Notre Dame uh, will own the stats. Look at that, though. That's the most important one. Time of possession, 20-35 for Notre Dame, nine and a half, about nine and a half for Penn State. Bring the sticks all the way across to measure. Tony Saka knows he can throw the football on his football team and move it. You just can't get greedy. And the thing, a couple times on third down situations, you can't throw 45-yard passes right. against a Notre Dame defense. You've got to hang in there and try in that 15-yard zone. Been big game psychologically for Penn State. They've had a good season, but they have yet to beat a ranked team. They're going to a bowl game. They want to boost it would be to beat a team that's number one for Penn State team. It's been uncharacteristically down the last couple of years. Back up being flushed to the sidelines and run out by Todd Light. He's actually going to pick up a yard or two. And it will be second and long. Tony Saka, who was a great three-sport athlete in high school in New Jersey, he played so, so well in basketball, Paul, he broke his school scoring record in basketball. You know who set the record? His older sister, who is a player at Fairfield University now. Tony Saka broke his sister's school scoring record. Snap, Saka got it right back in his hands, but they lose the play. Bob Dahl wraps him up for no game. We have been given word, and we don't know why yet. Well, we'll watch the replay first. There it is, just a miscommunication with the snap there. Just didn't get it. Pulled out a little bit too early, it was a little bit too hard. You know, when that happens, the quarterback says it's the center's fault, and the center always says it's the quarterback's fault. Well, we've been given word that Ismail is not going to play the second half. We don't know why, but that's the word we've received. Ismail has been bothered by some turf toe problems the last couple of weeks, but he, we are told he will not play the second half. Third and nine. Oh, over the middle, right the tight the end is open, but he's short of the first down. Rick Sales, the tight end, stumbled as he caught the ball, lost his balance, and he goes down about a yard and a half shy of the first what, down. What any excuse, either the pass was there, he just lost his balance. Poor 
Look at Zorich. Even with that bad leg, he puts the pressure on the quarterback here. There's Sales over the middle in that soft zone again. Now, look, I don't understand that. He just uh, got a little bit too anxious. Notre Dame has nobody back deep here. So they do have 11 players on the field, but nobody back deep. And Helkowski will get, if he gets a good, nope, he doesn't get the good bounce again. And Notre Dame gets a break, not a very good punt that goes out of bounds, shy of the 20-yard line. So Notre Dame takes over as so we pause now. The Irish manage to blunt the challenge of Penn State there in that early drive. And uh, I think it was really important that uh, the Lions, the Lions got themselves in a bit, little bit of momentum there in that first drive. Yes, they had to get a drive and get better field position. They didn't get a good punt, and their punter isn't doing a particularly good job for them today. But uh, here we see Notre Dame out on the 21, and let's see what they can do. He's going to lose two yards. Nothing there for Waters. Lou Berfani on the defensive line for Penn State made the play. And it's going to be a loss of two. Tony Brooks now checks in. So without Ismail, who we do not, we do not even see him on the sidelines at this point. We see probably a lot more of Sean Davis as a wide receiver in the second half. Fire rolling left again. Throwing it long for Davis, and again, overthrown. You don't throw too many deep patterns all year long. Uh, I think we can count on both hands how many really yeah. deep fly patterns or post patterns we've seen all year long. Amara's got a very, very strong arm. He can throw it 65, 70 yards if he needs to. Most of those have been overthrown this yeah, year, exactly. as opposed to underthrown. Well, we've had two touchdown passes overthrown today. Uh, Rick, Rick has had the rocket open for six, and right there, Sean Davis was open. Oh, well, it is third and 12, Notre Dame, from the 20-yard line. Now you come back in in that soft zone, right over the middle, will be the soft zone. Right there. Derek Brown can't hang on, running up the field at the 45. Tried to make a good grab with the hands and could not. And Notre Dame will go three downs and out, and this will be the first Notre Dame punt of the game. And that good Penn State defense on the first down play. But here again, the man's wide open. The pitch is just a little bit off there. There's big Jerry Brown coming from out. You don't get too many opportunities to catch a football. And uh, when you do get it, you hit it in your hand. You better catch it. It is a great tight end. Hendrick back to punt for the first time today. Oh, and he launches one. Way back goes Thomas inside his 30-yard line. And he's back to the 40 and brought down there. So Penn State will take over with good field position. And as Paul mentioned, it's still very much a ball game. 21-7 Notre Dame. No turnovers in this football game. And we'll come back with Penn State at the 41. So Penn State defensively, they too hold firm. So with just three minutes gone here, in the second half both teams have had a chance of doing something and both teams have finished finished up punting the ball which is uh, a little bit frustrating a little bit disappointing for those of us that love offensive football but uh, certainly defense the order of the day here in the early stages of the second half all right now then you have another chance to win some goodies in our competition as you can see here's the array of prizes you can win if you can answer these two questions who beat miami in their opening game of the 1990 season and what a cracker that was you got a choice of three was it the team we're seeing today penn state was it kansas was it the jayhawks or was it the brigham young cougars and question two which current notre dame player is nicknamed the rocket and even john ralston reckons he can answer that one let's have a look at the three choices ricky waters Ragib Ismail or Rodney Culver and if you know the answers put them both on a postcard together with your name and address and send them to Screen Sport American Football Competition number 2 PO Box 40A London W1V 4TA make sure they get here by December the 21st that's when you've got to get them in and we'll be making the draw for the lucky winners during our coverage of the New Year's Day College Bowl games and uh, a lot of talk that the fighting Irish are going to be um, going up against Colorado for the national championship in the Orange Bowl. 
and what a game that would be. John, we've uh, we've talked about you've been watching games in Europe. What, what brings you to Europe? Well, the uh, World League of American Football is committed to globalizing our game, and we're going to have teams in Europe this next year. We're just pleased to have a team in London, uh, going to have a team in Frankfurt, going to have another one in Barcelona, have our own division here in Europe. That means a division winner will be in the playoffs. We'll talk more about that later, John, but right now Penn State take over in excellent field position. Stonebreaker showing blitz. He's picked up. Ball goes to Leroy Thompson. And a good run out to the 50-yard line before Stonebreaker and Todd Light. Stonebreaker blitzing over the center has to come back nine yards down the field to make that tackle. State has had a little more success running the football today than I think they expected. They expected, right? And I'm surprised they haven't run it more. Well, they haven't had the football. They only had it for nine yeah. minutes in the first half. Notre Dame controlled it, you know, for 20 minutes. And if that turns around, it's going to be a tough one. Fullback Sam Gash. There's a great tackle by Kolkowski. George Williams as well, but Kolkowski really made the play, and they lose a yard. Boy, his father was a tough football player with the Detroit Lions, Bob Kolakowski. Tough kid. He's one of the seniors playing his final game, Scott Kolakowski. Both outside linebackers, Kolakowski and Andre Jones, in their final game. It's third down here, third and two. And a quick pass. Oh, and Andre Jones almost was off to the races. Oh, a good coverage. There's the quickness of Andre Jones shows up. Almost good enough for six points. He could have held on. That was six. And there you can see a little uh, coaching by the great one over there. All the time in the world, it was just Ooh. good defensive play by Jones. He had six points in his hands. Notre Dame now sends Ray Griggs back as the deep man in the absence of Ismail. It's fourth down and two, and they punt it. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good punt by Helkowski. This is the one he'd been looking for. Notre Dame's going to be pinned deep. He should have made a fair catch at the 15-yard line. It's an experience there. He just got away from it. That's something that's plagued Notre Dame this year. They've got a lot of different people back there catching punts. And that time the ball gets down, they're going to mark it at the 9-yard line. So the Irish will be pinned back deep in their own territory. And here's where I guess they would like to say, let's line it up like we did early in the football game. That's Run right. the ball at him, punch 90, it out. 92-yard drive is what they'd like here. And they'll start off running the football down here. Four and a half minutes into the second half. The teams have exchanged punts three times in the quarter. Notre Dame starting deep in their territory. And Ricky Waters goes up the middle for a very short game. 21-7 Notre Dame with Paul Horning, Ted Robinson at Notre Dame Stadium. In the last uh, four years, Notre Dame's only lost a couple of home football games. Penn State beat the Irish here the last game of the 86 season. And until Stanford won the game here early this year, that's the last home loss Notre Dame had suffered. Home cooking, everybody likes it. Second and eight now from the 11. And it's Waters again. There's the hole. I smell six. Ricky Waters out there, the 45. And now putting close to 100 yards rushing. In fact, that is right on the button for Ricky Waters. Boy, I tell you, he saw a little crack. Watch this, out of the eye. This is where he runs best. Look at the guard pull. Beautiful hole right up the middle. Look at Ricky Waters with two great straight arms. That was Gene McGuire on the tackle pull. Good block. 101 yards now for Waters. That gets Notre Dame out of trouble. Here's Brooks. And a tough yard. Play strung out nicely by Penn State. Leonard Humphreys in the secondary. Yeah, this is what, this is this is Holtz's kind of game though, right, Ted? He yeah. loves, just loves to control the pace of the game with the run. If you can't stop him, you start giving up first downs with the rush, <laughs> you're in for a long night because you're just running down your throat. Surprised Notre Dame threw 12 passes in the first half. That yeah. surprised him. Second and nine now, the Irish are there, 46. And it's Brooks. 
And it's going to be third and long here as Brooks goes down shy of midfield. Lou Benfatti on the tackle. And it's going to be third down and six. Now they'll throw it or they run the draw. And we haven't seen the draw off of a little play action yet. There it is, 102 yards officially for Ricky Waters. Passing situation here. But out of the eye, though, so we've seen Notre Dame run the football in this situation also. Should be a pass. Derek Brown is split wide here, and Meyer's going to be sacked. Man who got there first was Eric Ravetti, an outside linebacker, and he was the man who really made the play, and Notre Dame will be forced to punt. These kids today are so big and so quick when you blitz with them. Uh, you know, you blitz with the linebacker either on the inside or the outside at different holes. It's just so hard for to teach the offensive line at this stage of the game to pick up a certain person. Good snap to Hendrick. He blasts this one out, and it's taken by Thomas at the 20. Up the middle. Good run. Nice return by Tyson Thomas, a sophomore from York, Pennsylvania, to the 35-yard line. 21-7 Notre Dame. So we pause now for a regional break. 21-7, the real big play there in that drive. The Ricky Waters run, and once again, you've got to question the tackling here, John. Yeah, this is that counter trade that the Washington Redskins make the so popular it's the guard and tackle pulling back to the tight end side and uh, open up a nice hole now what about the world league of american football which you're obviously associated with what kind of quality of player are they looking for well the regular 40-man squad will be made up of predominantly nfl cuts so it's nfl caliber type of player playing there uh victor ebu but uh, yeah. is one of the players that we're we think can play on the regular squad. Otherwise, we're going to have four additional players. We call it Operation Discovery. We want to get some national players, and then we expect to be able to teach them. And uh, these could be players with or without football experience. Uh, we're just fine athletes. That's what we're looking for. So there's going to be British players on the British team, in other words. Yes, there will be. Right. Okay. We'll come back to that later. Penn State back on the move and uh, gain of ooh, maybe maybe a yard there if he was lucky there for Penn State number 44 the ball carrier built a bit like John Riggins as well but uh, Penn State getting off to another drive and uh, they're still in this game aren't they John just 21 7 no it, the Penn State's still in it now this is an important drive they, uh, they got a good punt return, and they've, they've got to make a couple first downs, get it down into Notre Dame territory. Uh, they're dropping back to pass on a second down. The quarterback, Saka, does a good job, buys himself a bit more time. And the pickup, that's another first down. So uh, Penn State now on the march, midway through the third period. The score remains Notre Dame 21, Penn State 7. And just looked the field over, came back, and saw Thompson watch this. I mean, this is a sack. I tell you, Devon McDonald on the outside there, Stonebreaker. Now he's forced to go outside, and he looks back. He knows he's going to get hit, too. Hangs right in there. Zach was not playing like a young man has been pulled from a couple of games this year. Replaced by Tom Bill for wins as recently as two weeks ago in West Virginia. He's going to get another first down inside the 40. To meet Frias DuBose and Stonebreaker. And another first down for Penn State. Now the offense is sitting out over on the field. They're watching their defense. Here's this four-man rush for Notre Dame. And I don't know, that almost looked as if it was a quarterback draw yeah. type of thing. He just went back and he planted his right foot. I don't think he was looking over the secondary as far as a pass was concerned. I think that was automatic with a quarterback draw. But for 12 yards. Bob Dahl wraps him up. Thompson gets three. Notre Dame has stayed with Willie Clark. The game, the entire game is the free safety. And Rod Smith almost the entire game at that cornerback spot. Notre Dame might start feeling a little pressure now, Ted. You know, especially your offense. You haven't 
put together any sustained drives here in the second half. You've had a couple opportunities. You haven't played well. And you'd, you're sitting there watching Penn State move the football. They put some points on the board. We've got one. And Penn State moved there. Pat Duffy, the right offensive tackle move. Very few penalties today. No turnovers. Yeah, that's been one of the nice things, especially after last week. We've had very well-played games. Joe Paterno, you know, a lot of people thought that he might be winding down right now, but I think getting back in the or getting in the Big Ten and trying to get this program back to its normal, what for them has been a normal top ten status, is keeping his competitive fuel going. Second down and 12 now back at the 40-yard line of Notre Dame. 5.50 to go in the third quarter. Deep. There's that corner pattern, wide open again with the tight end. Rick Sales that time, but the ball was thrown high and sailed through his arms to Bose. I'll tell you, this is what's got to kill you, see, if you're Joe Paterno. Mm -hmm. Now he's <laughs> looking over the films. He said, look, here's the down when it's second long, third long. We're going to go with the tight end on a corner pattern. Now you're going to be wide open. Now this has happened twice. Now see right there, George Williams may have caused this pass to be incomplete. It just goes off his fingertips. He forced him to throw a little bit high. He's been open. That play is open. And here we go. Third down and 12. At the 40. Notre Dame rushes four. Sack of buying time. Flag down. Ball is tight end. Caught. And that is caught for him. That's first down yardage. Wow. And there's a flag down about the 35 yard line. I think this is going to be against Notre Dame. I'm not sure how that ball was completed. Third and 12, and again, Penn State converts and looks like it's going to be a first down. Pass is good for first down yardage. Let's see what the penalty is. Oh, well, it is definitely a first down. I'll decline that. Penn State. Well, that was Al Golden finding the open spot. Actually, Notre Dame has had problems with this all year, Ted. When they do force the quarterback out of the pocket on third down and In second long. Against the defense against an eligible receiver before the ball was thrown. This penalty carries a 10-yard penalty and a first down. That penalty will be declined. And the they run took the is a first down. Absolutely. They took the play completion to Al Golden. But anyway, we've watched it all year long. It seems as if when the quarterback of the opposing team gets time, has to rush out of the pocket, he usually finds somebody open. And that's really, uh, it shouldn't happen as much as it does. First and 10 at the Notre Dame 26 for Penn State. Saka barks the signal, sends everybody out, and fires to the tight end again. That's Rick Sales, and he is at the first down stick at the 16-yard line. And they picked it up in the film. They said the tight end is going to be open against this Notre Dame defense. Let's go to him. Here it is again. There he is on the inside. Now he's got to beat the linebacker. And he makes a good move here back to the inside. But you know, you hit it right off, Paul. They haven't thrown the ball to the wide receivers in this game. It's been to the backs and the tight end. Backs and the tight end. A little bit soft over that middle. And they come with the linebacker. It's just shy of a first down. So. Now you're in a situation where Joe Paterno was staring at the face of, hey, I could be out of this game in the first sure, quarter. Absolutely. Now we're coming down near the end of the third quarter, and his team is driving to get within a touchdown. Notre Dame has had a hard time putting the teams away they should have all year long. You know, they always let people off the mat. But they've gotten this far. Let's see if they can keep it up. It's almost a free player. You have second down in inches. Blitz with Stonebreaker. Run with Thompson. First down inside the 15. Zorich and DuBose on the tackle. You know, it always sees it even up a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, here's the first half, a team controls the football for 20 minutes. Second half, it goes on the other side. I mean, it just seems as if everybody will get their shot when the two teams are, are, are matched somewhat evenly. Well, That's a 12-yard line. Third quarter, time remaining. They've taken about five minutes off this clock in this drive. Thompson again, wrapped up in the middle after a very short game. Bob Dahl and DeVose in uh, there. They give him three at this point. Uh, that's what Penn State 
can't afford. They haven't had too many chances down deep. They need to take them in. Well, the thing with Penn State is they can't get greedy, Ted. We talked about it. If they just handle the short passing game and soft zones over the middle, they move the football. Second down and eight. Gash and Thompson in the back. They've gone the distance. A short lob. Oh, that was thrown poorly for David Daniels. And the reason was Stonebreaker. He was in on the blitz and he forced him to throw a little bit early. So it is third down and eight from the Notre Dame 10 at 3.59 to play in the third quarter. Notre Dame's problem has been when they rush three men or they give the quarterback a lot of time or when the quarterback has, is forced out of the pocket, he usually finds somebody open after he's harassed. See if they blitz again. Watch the linebackers. That's the key. David Daniels and Todd Light. Man coverage, bottom of your picture. Here comes Stonebreaker. That's a sack. And wants to there go. But Greg Davis on a safety blitz. And they blitz Stonebreaker on the inside. He took care of the back. That freed up somebody if they couldn't get over to get Davis. Watch it. There it is. Here comes the back. And the fullback, Sam Gass, missed his man completely. Now, Fayek lining up. He's 11 for 16 this year. Freshman Craig Fayek, 39 yards away. And that one is no good. He missed it wide. And Penn State comes away heartbroken. A long drive, and they get nothing. Big break for Notre Dame. With three minutes left here in the first quarter, they dodge a bullet. Penn State got it down to the 10 yard line. They come away empty. And Notre Dame stays up by two touchdowns late in the third quarter. Get the feeling that Penn State needed something, even three points out of that. Yes, uh, that was a, a play that was destroyed by a bad read by the uh, wide receiver. Uh, on a blitz like that, he's on a fade pattern to the corner, and he just didn't run his route. That could have been a touchdown if he had played the ball. So Notre Dame would get possession with Rodney Culver, and he doesn't get an awful lot. But it's the Irish that take over, leading 21-7. to seven. Time running out here in the third quarter. I get the feeling if they score here, if they've got a touchdown in here, they could have put the game away. Yes, uh, certainly uh, Penn uh, had a chance to uh, tie the score or bring the score closer. And uh, uh, with the defense stiffening, uh, I think uh, Notre Dame will go down now. And if they put a score in, I think that'll kill off the drive. And they're going to have to do something because uh, Rocket is uh, injured and uh, they're going to have to put the game under ice now. And they're missing the Rocket. Second and long for the Irish. And State blitzes, and Meyer will not even get away from center. Deanna Frio makes the play. I don't know psychologically what kind of impact losing Ismail has, but it hasn't been the same offense here. It really has. Quarter. They just look like they're a little bit flat. They need a play. They need somebody to come through with the play. Ricky Waters had great success in the first half, and he's really been the only one that's had success running the football. And he made a big play on the last drive, and the Notre Dame couldn't capitalize. 34-yard run. Got the ball out near midfield. Third down, 10. Meyer puts it up. And Sean Davis with a catch and a first down at the 43. Now, Sean Davis was covered. I tell you, there was good coverage that time by Sean Davis. Darren Perry had good coverage. But it was just the rocket arm of Rick Meyer who delivered the football just before he could re react. Now watch, this isn't bad coverage here. He lets him go in the deep zone. Now watch Perry, he's right there. And normally you'll be able to react that far, but with that arm, that ball got there in a hurry. 135 to go in the quarter. First down, blindside blitz coming. And Meyer throws it away and it's almost caught. Whoa, what a great play by Meyer to get rid of the football. And Derek Brown almost caught it in midfield. That time the home crowd helped. Meyer heard this blitz coming. Derek Bonner. Right from behind, right here. Now he feels it. Look at this pitch. Just got rid of the football, saved the sack. 
Eight out of 16 today for 161 yards is Rick Meyer. And second down and 10 now in a minute 30 exactly to play third quarter. 21-7 Notre Dame. I set behind Meyer. That one is intercepted. That may be six. Deanna Frio running. And he is brought down inside the Notre Dame 15. Mark Deanna Frio. And the kid doesn't throw many interceptions, I'll tell you that. That's only five on the year, and a couple of those were deflections. But this one was just a good interception by Deanna Frio. He was trying to drill it in there as he rolled to his right. Watch number 38. Now, he's not even looking at that quarterback. Just a great move. There was the open man, Sean Davis. Just couldn't get it over that linebacker. And Penn State got the pressure on. So, with one minute and 19 seconds to play in the third quarter, it's right back at it for the Notre Dame defense. Penn State will start at the Notre Dame 11-yard line. First turnover of this football game. Sack up to center. Jerry Collins is the tailback. And he gets the pitch. And Collins is hit right there. And that was Eric Jones who made the first hit. A sophomore from Portage, Indiana, that has played much more since Zorich's injury several weeks ago. A little tougher defense against a run down here. Sack will go upstairs. I don't think Joe Paterno is going to try to run against this defense now. They stopped him for no gain. He'll throw it. Brian O'Neill is the fullback. Jerry Collins the tailback. Daniel split right against Light. And coverage. Here's a blitz. blitz. Great Davis again. But Saka gets away once and then throws the ball away to avoid the sack. Alert footwork by Saka as McDonald was about to bring him down. That's right. And Greg Davis a little bit hot in himself. He had it. Dead aim at the quarterback, and that quarterback is not that good a move. Davis should have had this one here. Watch him coming in from the right. He just got the quarterback, and he just moves up a little bit. He just lost control, and then Zorich yeah. got him around the knees and caused the incompletion. Well, this may be the play Penn State looks back at as the play of the game, third and ten. They blitzed almost every time with success, and here they come again. Don't break him, but he's picked up, and that is a tie. He caught it for a touchdown. Rick Sales juggling, bobbling, and got it at the last second for a Penn State touchdown. Jeff Burris, number nine over there, had him man to man. Yes. So they got beat on the corner pattern. Mr. Sales, Rick Sales, the tight end again. Boy, this, has this been a game for the tight end for Penn yep. State or not? And Penn State. Coming away with heartbreak a few moments ago, but the interception by Deanna Frio on a big third down pass for the touchdown. Third down and 10 again, and Penn State converted for seven points this time. And with 32 seconds to play in the third quarter, it is now Notre Dame 21 and Penn State 14. And once again, the Notre Dame's defense against the pass. There it is, third and 10. That's Jeff Burris. He puts it. Now watch the bobble here. There it is. There now. There's the referee right there. Right on, he was right on time. We'll take another look from about the 40-yard line where the camera is there. Bobble, 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 left, 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 left. Good call, he had it. Look at Saka, 199 yards now for Saka, and we got a whole quarter to go. I tell you, Notre Dame's defense has really made great quarterbacks out. A lot of quarterbacks this year throwing the football. A lot of quarterbacks have thrown for a lot of yardage. But this third quarter, you'd have to say the Notre Dame offense has had a letdown. Exactly. And that's really, the defense made a great stand last time. And well, that's they came first close turnover. this time. First turnover, look, Notre Dame looked like they dodged a bullet and came back with the turnover. Now yeah, you got to come up on a bit offensively if you're Notre Dame. Move the football. It's a new football game now as far as they're concerned. Jeff Burris, the freshman, tailback by trade, but now playing cornerback the last couple of weeks, and he is the deep back in place of Ismail. Rocket Ismail has not played in the second half. The word he received a bruised thigh. 
32 seconds to play third quarter. Here's the quick approach by Fayek, and he'll kick it deep this time. So give Jeff Burris a chance. Nope, it's going to be Rod Smith instead. And Rod Smith is out near the 30-yard line. And now we'll see how Notre Dame's offense takes up takes its approach after a key interception. You know, the only thing I don't like about the Heisman Trophy voting is they've already sent out the ballots, and I think a lot of people have already voted. I mean, you could vote uh, a couple of days ago, Ted, and I really don't think you should vote till after the whole football season's over. Get hit by Culver, and he's out there with a 35 mile the last play of the third quarter. I agree with you. Wait till the whole season's so over. Have the banquet later. What's the difference? Never understood that. Why they get all the ballots out this early. Got some big games coming up next week. And this week. Well, we've got 15 big minutes to play here. Notre Dame has started so strong in this game, but they are hardly in the clear. A late touchdown in the third by Penn State. It's just a seven-point Notre Dame lead in the quarter left. 21-14, and here's Rick Myra throwing what proves to be a costly interception. With Dion Frio returning the ball to the 11-yard line, and then it was almost as if, uh, almost as if the tight end didn't want this one, John. Oh boy, wasn't that something? He juggled it a long way, but uh, there's no question he had both feet in bounds when he. Uh, finally claimed possession. And it's a nice time to score just as the third quarter is coming to the end to bring yourselves for two within seven. And we've said this so often about Notre Dame this year. They get themselves into a, a good position early on. They go off fast and then it's as if they go to sleep. Well, this is uh, uh, one of those things where Myra has been throwing very, very effectively. He didn't see the linebacker on a frio coming inside out on, the, uh, on that particular pattern and that's why it was picked up. And so they needed something Penn State and they've got it they got the interception and they got the seven points 21 14 now then what else is going on today here's some latest scores Virginia trailing Maryland 35 30 these are all latest these are not finals but what a shock that would be if it stayed that way Michigan Michigan beating Minnesota 35 18 Illinois 4 Indiana 10 Illinois 4 how do you get four so there's like a couple of safeties in that game Georgia Tech 42 Wake Forest 7, Florida all over Kentucky 47 to 15, Kansas trailing Missouri 34 to 21, Auburn and Georgia that one not kicked off yet, Iowa State losing to Oklahoma State, Tennessee we saw them of course last week 10-7 over Mississippi and uh, we'll give you some more later on but now the Irish are back on the march for not for long, stuffed there, the Penn State defense getting tough there, that was Penn State getting tough. Michigan State are beating Northwestern 29-22. Iowa coming back perhaps 14-3. They were upset last week, of course. Colorado all over Kansas State 64-3. And Texas, who are now very much a contender, 38-10. They, they are a contender for major bowl honors. Miami, Florida, Boston College, you want to know that one? Well, you stick around and you'll see that game right after this one. Uh, Texas A&M beating Arkansas 13-10 at the moment. Those are the latest scores as Myra Rick Myra goes down and really what on earth has happened to this Notre Dame offense as soon as you take the rocket out of there they seem to struggle it's uh, it's uncanny John but the, since, since we've lost the rocket as we just look at the stats through three quarters but since we've lost the rocket it's as if the Notre Dame offense has gone right off the boil it, there's no doubt they missed the big play guy and of course uh, what that means to the Penn State defense instead of worrying about that deep speed now they can work their way up and, and kind of crowd the whole line of scrimmage. And indeed, Notre Dame now in a punting situation. So, with plenty of time left, Penn State will get the ball in good field position. Here's the return on around about the 32-yard line, and he's not going to go too far, just corralled out of bounds. So, Penn State, though, take over with best part of a quarter left. They trail by seven, and they've got good field position. 21-14, then, in favor of the Irish what saved the game in Tennessee last week is what they need here. They need to take away. There were two big interceptions last week in the that's fourth right. quarter. That's what well, they're, they're going to have a play. chance because no. Tony Saka is going to throw the football. Yeah. 
21-14. Notre Dame has been shut out thus far in the second half. We have 13-39 remaining. And since they got those three touchdowns, they've been kind of complacent, Ted. They've tried to sit on this lead. Freshman Jim Flanagan is out there on defense. So is freshman Jeff Burris. And on a play fake, here's a bomb, and Daniels is out there, and Jeff Burris got back with him. Step for step, good defense. And the ball hung up there. He got behind Burris. But, of course, the long bomb he caught up with. And watch it. Watch this. I think this kid can't run. Uh, here's, that's six points if he throws the football far enough. He just couldn't get it out there. Then Jeff Burris makes a nice recovery. Now, just understand, we're talking. this is the number one team in the country, and that kid's playing quarterback, and he's been there for two weeks in his life. He's cornerback, yes. He's cornerback for two weeks in his life. watch a linebacker see if they blitz this is the down that's killed Notre Dame all year long defensively third and long Stonebreaker getting the defensive signal from coordinator Gary Darnell Stonebreaker and Grimm are the inside linebackers four down third and 11 Play pretty straight up, and Saka throws underneath. Oh, that's in the middle. A, whoa, that's going to be close to the first down. Oh, he's got it. Thompson, if he had gone straight ahead, would have had it. He veered to his left, and he looks like he has it, but he made it closer than it needed to be. Oh, he's got the first down. They're going to bring out the sticks. Watch number 44, Thompson. You see the middle. The linebackers are way deep, and he's so wide open in the middle. He's so afraid of down the middle here. That's Don Grimm trying to come up. Willie Clark makes a stop. And it is the first down. So Penn State at their 46-yard line with a first down. And the belief that they can win the football game now has got to be on that side. Oh, yeah. The belief that wasn't there early. The uh, belief was there about five, ten minutes ago, I'll tell you that. When they got that interception, right. that was it. See, you just play along, play along, play along with the team when you can put them away. You don't take advantage of it, then you give them a little lift. I'm saying, and Bob Dahl, there's a fine play as he broke off the block of Dave Brisenchek. I, I hate to say it negatively, but I tell you, I don't know if this is good or bad. You know, you force them into that long yeah. passing situation is where the, uh, they've been moving the football. If you're Notre Dame, you, you, get, you look at Notre Dame with the second long, you say, uh-oh, they're so soft underneath, they usually pick up the 10 or 12 yards. I tell you, they've been open. The hot receiver's been open all day long, and that's Tony Thompson. Here comes the outside blitz. Stonebreaker! And the ball is incomplete. He crushed Tony Saka to the ground. And see, without the blitz, without the force of the quarterback to throw the football early, he's got a man-to-man -man situation over there. Might have been complete, but he wasn't going to be complete because he had to he had to really get rid of the football. Watch Stonebreaker here, right here. Nobody picks him up. Now he feels that. He knows he's got to get rid of the football. Wasn't even close to being completed because of that blitz. That sounds extremely repetitive, but here it is again. Yep. Third and 13. Watch Tony Thompson over the middle there with a little delay. By the tight end. Four-man rush. And a little screen set up. Oh, and good. Wow, that was not a well-designed play. I didn't like the call no. either. They ran a screen, and Stonebreaker had his nose for the football right there. That was a very strange call, third and 13. So the screen pass to Gash. The ball is incomplete. Here's the punt coming now from Helkowski. That was about the last play I was looking for. Well, I tell you, it wasn't that bad a call in, in, in this kind of a thinking, Ted. Notre Dame has been blitzing on third down, and if and they didn't blitz that time. Stonebreaker laid off. So, you know, if they catch him in a blitz with the screen, oh. Oh, he uh, just got the punt away. Off the side of the foot. Missile bound. And it gets a good Penn State bounce. Inside the 15, Sean Davis came very close to a punt block. Notre Dame by a touchdown as we pause now for a regional break. Sports check.
Channel America's coverage of Notre Dame football continues. Uh, a few fingernails being chewed, I think, in this fourth quarter. Penn State fighting back. And although they had to punt there, they're still very much in it. Just a touchdown behind. Just a reminder before we go back to the game about the address of where to send your competitions to. It's the Screen Sport American Football Competition number two, PO Box 4TA, London W1V 4TA. Get them in by December 21st. That's when the draw is going to be made. And the announcement of who the winners are and the answers, if you need to know them, that'll be given to you on New Year's Day when we'll be broadcasting, we hope, fingers crossed, the Orange Bowl between Notre Dame and Colorado. What a game that would be, John. Oh, that'll be a great one. That Colorado football team is just outstanding. Coach McCartney has done a great job there. It's been such a topsy-turvy season. No one team has really dominated, has there? Who, who do you think is the best team in college football right now? At one time, I thought the University of Washington was going to be, and then and UCLA went to Seattle and beat them up there. I, I just couldn't believe that. But uh, uh, it's very difficult to stay undefeated all the way through. You're just bound to have a, a, a bad week. I think Steve Spurrier's done an outstanding job with the Florida football team. Uh, they're playing very, very well. Hard to say who would be the uh, top team. I think Colorado might end up the, uh, the best team. You think they could beat Notre Dame with the Orange Bowl? I think they can. Well, we shall, uh, we shall hopefully see. That will be a certainly a tremendous meeting, the two number one, number one and number two team in the country, uh, just as they were last year, of course, and uh, Notre Dame upset. Well, Notre Dame, I don't think, were number two, were they? I think they were number three, and that, of course, let the Hurricanes through when they beat yes. uh, Colorado. So there's uh, plenty of points to prove and old scores to be settled if those two teams meet up again. Oh, also. But uh, I don't think the Fighting Irish guys are thinking too much about the Orange Bowl right now. They've got a battle on their hands here. Time running out, but still plenty of time for anything to happen. And Ricky Waters carries and doesn't get a lot. This Penn State defense, the second half, been very, very tough. It's been a real transformation in the second half, hasn't it, John? And I think uh, it, because the Rockets out of there, they just don't have the deep threat. That brings the whole defense on up. And of course, when you're in a two touchdown advantage, now one touchdown, you're saying, hey, we can't throw that ball because we threw an interception the last time. And it just takes away from the, uh, uh, the ability to keep your uh, offense wide open. There's a hand up again, and it's to Ricky Waters again, and Waters gets around seven or eight yards there. It'll be just shy of a first down. Another fine game for Ricky Waters today. He does enjoy playing Penn State over 100 last year. Last year over 100 yards today as well. That'll bring up a third down and short. Big play coming up for both teams. Emphasizing King Rodney Culver here. They go outside, they would, I, I, I think, be better off, but of course, We've seen it all year long. Usually Rodney Culver gets the football in, in this situation. They got out of the eye. Now a timeout is called by Penn State as the Casio clock stops at 10.22 to play. And the Nittany Lions take a defensive timeout here on a third and one play. Notre Dame holding a 21 to 14 lead. 10.22 to play in the game. Third and one. It's a big play coming up defensively for Penn State. Big play coming up offensively for Notre Dame. Just 10.22 left in the ball game. serve a double purpose, dual purpose. If you're sitting there in deep in the fourth quarter with only a touchdown and two-point conversion looking at you, yep. you know Penn State's going to go for two. So it is a first down. Well, this is where Ismail might have gotten hurt. This is the last time he touched the football on a bruised thigh here. Right there. Kind of looked like he jerked his leg in the air. Myers saw the blitz coming with Deanna Frio. Kept the ball himself and goes maybe for a yard. That's what teams have done now. When when they get in that trips and, yeah. they, and they have the 
last remaining back go in motion. Most of your teams would just throw those two linebackers. And uh, there you see it. It's almost an automatic. Meyer has to get out of his way. If he goes back, he's yeah, nobody, get Nobody's there to block him. Right. Well, Meyer picks up a yard, second and nine, with 9.40 to play. Gonna run it one more time. We'll run it reverse here, and it's Sean Davis. Get some room. Oh, he should have cut out run yeah. that guy. Oh, that bad, yeah. bad decision. Yeah, I agree. He had the outside and winds up losing yeah, a couple of yards. He could have beaten him. That's Lou Ben Fatty. Ben Fatty, and he's got a lot more speed than Ben Fatty. So, there's your time remaining. Notre Dame is faced with third and long here. Third down and 11. See, that's where they missed the rocket. The rocket right there. That was first down. He, he, he'd have gotten that speed to the outside. But you know, in all down. fairness, you know, there are enough weapons on this football oh, yeah. team that, there they, is. That, that they shouldn't just have the offense exactly. go into hibernation. Exactly, but with the rocket out of there, it takes a lot less pressure on And mentally it does, you know, psychologically. And here's nobody's left. It'll delay, and that's broken down. The tight end, Derek Brown, had it broken up, and Notre Dame will be punting again. Good coverage back. Goganish. He had him man to man. Notre Dame stymied again. They're just waiting, waiting uh, almost to get beaten. This is a kind of a That's, situation. Boy, it's a terrible feeling you have, just like the Stanford game. It was exactly that. The offense not even getting first downs here in the second half. Hendrick to punt. Oh, and he cranks one. That's a beautiful kick. Thomas back inside his 30. Tyson Thomas. Really good return, though. And Penn State, excellent field position, starting at their 42 yard line. Now, Penn State is smart. They will throw the football and come right out throwing it. Well, if they ever want to pull off a stunning upset, what a chance they're getting here in the second half. 21-14 Notre Dame. We pause now for a regional break. Here at Notre Dame Stadium, just a touchdown between the two teams. Plenty of time left, and it's Penn State that have got the ball. And John, they do not look like a number one team, the Irish, right now. I think that has to be said. No, they lost their ace, and, uh, and now they're floundering a little bit, content to play field position football and uh, to play some defense. It's a question now whether they can stop Penn State. You can't miss tackles like that. And a very, very big first down straight away coming up there. That's Terry Smith, the man who did the damage earlier on when he caught that 32-yard touchdown pass. Penn State over midfield already. Plenty of time left, and they just trail by seven. I wonder what's coming up. Let's rejoin Paul Horning and Ted McDonald. And Clark saves six, as you said, Ted. Quickly, Penn State's at the Notre Dame 34. They give it to Leroy Thompson. Nope, not there. And that was Demetrius Dubose who got through to break up the play. Thompson back to the original line. And here's where Penn State has not had good offensive games this year against the big teams. And they, haven't, they don't have a lot of yards in this game, but they're in a position here where if they can get one or two big offensive plays, they have a chance to beat number one. I'll guarantee you, it's going down there now. 7.45, here comes the blitz. And the screen to Thompson. Leroy Thompson, 15-yard line, first down Penn State. You see Notre Dame's defense has given up a lot of points. In fact, I don't remember number one team in a long time that's given up this many points 29 against Tennessee 31 against Navy they gave it 22 to Pittsburgh 20 to Miami 27 points they gave up to Air Force 36 to Stanford so there's the screen pass down the left sidelines and Notre Dame is in trouble now Saka Rowan deep Got a man open, it's the tight end, and he is going to score. Touchdown, Penn State. Al Golden. It's a tight end again. Boy, they really give him trouble. Roll out right, and he really drilled it. Boy, he did. That was across the field. That's a great throw. 
And it's 7.15 to play Penn State to kick the tie in the game. Tony Sack just has been sensational tonight. It's a career high for Tony Sack. 267 yards in the air. Three TDs. Freshman Craig Fayek now for the extra point try. And again, the Notre Dame appeared to be on the verge of blowing out in the first half. It's just like Stanford. And now we've got flags thrown after the conversion kick. There are some words going on. And an unsportsmanlike conduct flag thrown by the officials, which will be enforced on the kickoff. But with 7.15 to play, we are at a tie football game at 21. Well, what a difference a half makes, John. It was all Notre Dame in the first half. It's been all Penn State here so, so far in the second half. And uh, if, if you had to put some money down on this one, you'd put it on Penn State right now. Yes, you would. They've got uh, unusual momentum, but uh, uh, Notre Dame just making some mistakes. That, that was a well-executed play. They had that one set up. I'm not sure whether the tight end went behind the line. Here he is, number 89. No, nope, he's just going against the grain. Let everyone else pass him by. And then they threw it across field. Well, the question for the Irish is now, what can they do to regain the momentum? Because they've had none, really, since the rocket went off at the, at the end of the first half. Uh, I think Waters is their best bet. Uh, they've got to be able to run, and Myra's got to hit a couple passes. That's all there is to it. What's Coach Holtz thinking now? Is he thinking with seven minutes left, let's just try and hang on for the tie, or is he... No, uh, no, he's going down to get a win uh, at, at the best way he can. They'd like to get a big play on the kickoff return. At least get that first first down by getting it out past the 30. What do you think we're, uh, we are we could expect in the next couple of uh, plays? Well, uh, I, I would believe he'll go back to Waters and uh, depend on him to pull the game out of the fire. I don't think uh, the passer can do it by himself. Let me put you on the spot. Who do you think is going to come out on top of this one? Because well, it's so, Penn, so well balanced, isn't it now? Yeah, Penn State has a lot of momentum. And... Uh, uh, Notre Dame just has to shake out of a little bit of a lethargy. I think they got too conservative in the third quarter. Well, conservative or not, they certainly got themselves into a little bit of trouble. They led 14-0. They led 21-7 at the half. We're now all square here with seven minutes and 15 seconds left. Penn State kicking off. This one's all to play for with just over seven minutes left. Notre Dame just simply to start from the 20-yard line. Notre Dame was just 61 yards of offense in the half. They've had very few first downs. They've had virtually no spark except for one play. See, that kickoff from the 35-yard line would have been returned. That ball would have gotten to about the 9-yard yeah. line, and it would have been returned probably past the 20. So it cost them field position, that penalty. There's the passing yards. That's not... I would guess not surprising given what we've seen this year. It's just a matter of Notre Dame with no offensive production in the second half. They have ran the they have run the football every time on first down here in the second half. At least they go outside. See what I mean? Ooh, that was close to breaking it. Yep. Waters got six. Waters well over a hundred yards. He had the 33-yard run in the third quarter. That's the only offensive play of any substance for Notre Dame in the second half. Staying in the eye. And it's second down and four. You see those three linebackers are cramped on the inside, and I want to tell you something. It, play water. Is, it is tough on the inside of Packers. He's going to have to go outside and throw the football. And Paterno is forcing Lou Holtz's hand here. By that, he's forcing him to throw the football. And it's all, it's a, it takes a lot to force when you have to have your quarterback throwing on third down every time. You know, pretty good luxury when you can throw it on first down and keep them uh, off balance a little bit. Notre Dame's always forced on third down. Now, this is not necessarily a passing situation here at third and three. Third and three, they're going to run option. Nope, they're not going to get it. And Penn State is going to get the football back Still six minutes to go. And then Notre Dame has been smothered. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to go back, Paul. I'm going to tell you the play of the game. The play that's changed this game was the interception because it's taken. Right. It's, turned, it's made Notre Dame so conservative offensively. Well, this was a little counter option. And look at the penetration defensively. Yeah. 
you almost have to throw the football there. They've got yep. seven guys stacked up on the inside, and they're just they're just defying Notre Dame to throw the well, football. And since that interception, they just won't throw. It. Fair catch, and again, good field position at the 41-yard line. And Saka and Joe, Joe Paterno knows that the game is in his hands to win now. And Notre Dame's national championship hopes balance very precariously on these final five minutes and 23 seconds. Path for Notre Dame reads like this. Punt, punt, interception, punt, punt. And then once again, with just five minutes and 23 seconds left, punt. And really, everything starting to look as if we could be heading for a major upset. Penn yes. State could be about to break into the top ten. Yes, they could. Very, very easily. If they can take a concentrated drive here, and they've got plenty of time. Now, you, lo you know Lou Holtz. Yes. What's he doing, and what's he thinking in this situation right now? Well, he's got to get the ball back as quickly as he can. He's still thinking winning the uh, ball game, but uh, right now the momentum has gone away. He needs what we call a momentum changer, and he's got to find it uh, very, very quickly. He's got to reach down for some sort of a trick play or get a big play from someone. Well, they've come up with interceptions when they've needed them so often in the past. We've seen them in this situation. If ever they needed a turnover, I think now's the time. Penn State take over on their own 41. Leroy Thompson, and he's wrapped a good tackle there by Bob Dahl. He's played a fine game up front, out near the 45. Yeah, the game's uh, offensively. It's in Joe Paterno's hands now. He wants to eat up time off that clock. Second down and six here at the 45 of Penn State. The Nittany Lions have operated with great field position this half, and they've really made the most out of it. Play here's take, and here's the bomb for Daniels. He's out there just off the end of the fingertips. Leroy Thompson is going to go back. I say, I know you went for the home run down the right sideline, got greedy, and I tell you, Thompson, on the little delay over the middle, had the first down easily. Right here. And there's where you need to, whoa, look how close that comes to Rod Smith covering. Yeah, you see, even though a guy's open, you know, that's a very tough pass to complete when you're throwing it all out. Third down and six. A huge play for the Notre Dame defense. They got a key to pull back here if it was a fake to him because he slipped through and he's wide open. That's dash in motion. Play Watch fake. It. There he goes again. from Boo Williams. There he is. And Thompson with a catch and a great spin for the first down to the Notre Dame 45. It's open all night. Leroy Thompson. Now, I didn't call that play, Ted. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> I know. I didn't send that in, but I tell you, there he was. Good I spin. don't know why they just don't have a man keying him at all times, you know, over the middle. You know, you got to just put a man just and wait for him. Of course, it's a little easier set up here, isn't it? <laughs> and the first down is so big because that lessens the chances of Notre Dame getting the ball back with any appreciable amount of time here. Thompson running, and he got about four. Watch him again. He's gonna, they're going to go into the pass now. And uh, you're getting that where if they get about 10 more yards, they'll have a field goal yep. try here. You're getting to the point of four minutes. And, and if you don't believe what I'm talking about, Thompson's caught seven of those little delays over the middle yep. tonight. And in the previous season, the nine games the entire season coming in, he'd only caught 13 passes. Watch it. And when they get in the eye again, if it's play action, watch how open he is when he goes over the middle. down and six. Quick hit to Sam Dash. Well, he drives forward and got some yards. And it'll be third and short yardage for Penn State. Well, I don't like Penn State's theory here either. Trying to run the ball inside here. They've been very, very successful throwing the football. Now you put them down to one play. But I'm sure what they're doing, I think they're playing for three years. Oh, I can't. They can't be playing. It's a 54-yard field goal right No, 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 no. I think they're playing to try and burn a little time off here, but I don't think yeah. Joe Paterno's thinking end zone. Yeah, but you can't waste a play like that. You know, to put it in this position, third and three, when you've been so successful throwing the football, Ted. Three minutes to play, and it's Thompson, and he did not get it. He didn't get it. And he's going to be close enough that they'll go for it. 
They're only going to be, well, it'd be about two yards, yard and a half to two yards shy on fourth down. If, if they go don't make it, it's a poor selection to pay. I don't care if they do make it on fourth down. Wow. Look at this. Joe Paterno setting the punt team out with 2.40 to play. And that I cannot believe. You're kidding. I do not well, believe that. Back. Watch the fake. Not no. the fake. Watch it. They're going to try to uh, pull them off sides. Yeah, could Surely be. they would punt. Fourth down, a yard and a half, 225. Clock is running, and they do snap it. That is incredible. Notre Dame with nobody back. And they'll down this inside the 10 at 2.15 to play. Now the only thing Joe Paterno, of course, with the punt going down there, he's got to hope he's got two timeouts left that he uses them on defense and gets the ball back in midfield. And now if you're Notre Dame, you can't think conservative because your national championship hopes are right here. And that's no matter what Lou Holtz says. They're playing that's the number one for. team in the country. Penn State playing the number one team in the country, right. and they ponder. I agree. Me? I agree with you. At Notre Dame Stadium, what a remarkable half and a very, very unusual decision by Joe Paterno. And he'll hear a lot about that if this game ends up in a tie. But Notre Dame needs to go here. 215. Tie game from their seven-yard line. And Meyer standing up, throwing it out, incomplete, up the alley on the sidelines. And Joe Paterno's decision. He got a terrific break, and his punt was down inside the 10. It may turn out to be all right here, because now the clock stops well, on the I incomplete. Care. I don't care if they win that way. I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I'm with you, but Notre Dame, he knows Notre Dame has to go. Notre Dame's not going to be running the ball here, because they can't win the national championship tying the football game. Where was the uh, line of scrimmage? I lost track of 37-yard line. 37-yard line? You're punting? Come on. down and 10 and the Irish do run it up goes Brooks and Tony Brooks a forgotten man in the second half got the has it out and that should be a first down now Notre Dame's got to start taking a timeout or two themselves they've got three left and they've got to go all out to get three now they're gonna bring the chains out you know what I remember we look at the timeouts remaining here, Paul. I think back to that Stanford game. After Stanford scored the eventual game-winning touchdown, though Notre Dame went back down the field so easily and had the game on the fingertips of Derek Brown on the game's last play. So you know the Irish can yeah. move it down there by throwing. Well, this was a big play right here, and it was a good block by Rodney Culver on just a seal on the outside. And Brooks did some good hard running. Now they got to go ahead and go on upstairs and throw it. And they've got to... While this clock is running, they've got to get into this huddle, hurry up offense. This is this is when you say, uh, Ted, that they need practice on the two-minute warning. Comes down with the national championship on the line. Pressure and a dump out is incomplete. Center for Culver. But the pressure there broke that play up. And it was Richard McKenzie who has been the big rusher on Meyer all day that got in. They're not going to beat him with the screen at your own 20-yard line. they got to go downfield with the pass. 146 remaining. Notre Dame has all three timeouts to get a long way to go. They still have to go at least 53 yards to They've got to get the goal. big tight end down the field now out of the eye. John Davis in motion. Option. Uh, option hasn't worked yet today. And it's good for about a yard. They've got to take a Penn, timeout. Well, if I'm Penn State now, I'm taking a timeout here. Notre Dame's going to let the clock run. Hey. Now this is going to be one of those games that fans are going to be talking about for a long time. This is incredible. The clock is running from both sides' standpoint. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to stop the clock. I, I think both of them should call timeout. Yeah. You call it, Paul. <laughs> Third and nine. Myers standing in. Fires it over. Oh, it's intercepted. Darren Perry with the interception, and Penn State has it at the Notre Dame 20-yard line. The kid's been all over the field, Mr. Perry, and he threw it right into his hands. He tried to get something open over the middle. I don't care. I think it was a thing to do to try to get the first yes, it down. Was. Notre Dame needed a field goal to win this football game, and you can't do it if you don't try to throw the football downfield. Here it is. Just good coverage that time. Everybody's covered there. Well, a man could, was open up. 
just a high pass. Second interception today. And Notre Dame, which has lived on the edge all season, is about to fall off it. If Craig Fayek, a freshman place kicker, gets a chance, there's still 59 seconds left. Penn State's at the 20-yard line. Oh, this is going to run it. Thompson. Thompson. Going to run it. If I'm Notre Dame, now I'm going to take time out right now again. If I'm Notre Dame, what are you going to save them for? They won't. Got to take time out. They there it do, is. But they, let, they lost about 10 seconds there by not acting quickly enough. If you're Notre Dame, you've got to take all three timeouts right here and hope you get something to get the ball back. Both these teams, they played the pros. I don't know what would happen with the two-minute drill. Boy. What a football game. What a I great pretension. I don't guess in college, you tell me that Notre Dame, they don't work on the two-minute drill that much, right? No, they don't. Lou Holt says they really, they don't operate in the two-minute mentality. They don't run a specific two-minute drill in practice sessions. Why not? I wonder. Well, when you've, when you've gone 32 and 2 over the last couple of years, you probably well, figure you well, don't you need don't it a whole to, lot. Yeah. Normally, but there always comes a time when you need it. It's good to have it, I would think. Let's say, you know, you've seen, obviously you've seen so much football over the years. I can't ever remember a season like this with a team like this. No. I, and I, so and I think I just, early on we talked about, you know, look how many points that Notre Dame defense has given up. Now, in the second half, the defense has not been the fault. The fault no has way. been with the offense tonight. They haven't been able to. Well, it looks very, very bleak now for the Fighting Irish. Do you think... Uh, do you think, as, as Paul says, they're about to fall off the edge? No, they're about to. Uh, at least they'll get the field goal uh, attempt by Penn State. Uh, there's no question that they'll find a way to run that clock down to about four seconds, and the final play will be the uh, field goal. Now, what about that uh, punting situation that Joe Paterno was in, which everybody criticized the two, uh, our two colleagues on Sports Channel criticized? I thought it was a strange call. Uh, You're the not, coach. Not necessarily. He obviously can't kick a field goal. If you pin him down and have all three timeouts, but you got to keep him down there, uh, then it's an excellent play. I think they were looking for a fake punt at the time. No, you wouldn't try anything fancy. You just pooch it down in there tight. And then you say, one, two, three, we'll use our timeouts and force them to punt. And it does look indeed as if the Fighting Irish are going to be facing a field goal as the last kick of the game. And it's getting close. It's inside the 20 now. So you're looking at something like if it's kicked, if it's kicked from there, you're looking at about a 34-yard field goal with less than 30 seconds remaining. Let's rejoin and we just see Coach Lou Holtz there shaking his head and uh, he never looks happy, but I think he's got good reason to look very unhappy here. This is the national championship going up in smoke in front of his face and there's nothing he can do about it. And the wily old fox, Joe Paterno. No. Oh no, Joe. What, what, what did he call it so soon for? He's called it with eight seconds left. You never do that. <laughs> So um, why do you say you never do that? Oh, no, you go always to four seconds. He's forced the uh, kickoff now. See, this play will take approximately four seconds, maybe five. So there's three seconds on the clock. I saw the University of California beat Stanford with five laterals and uh, in a ball game out on the West Coast. So uh, uh, anything can happen. Why, why uh, allow the other team to have a chance to return a kickoff? You just don't do it that way. Well, it's been a pressure game throughout, hasn't it? I mean, I'm wondering if, you know, dare one criticize the coaches of the stature of Joe Paterno and, and Lou Holtz, well, but has the you pressure just, got to them? Oh, no, you just wear Joe uh, probably uh, not in as many of these kind of situations where he uh, runs time off the clock, but uh, that's exactly what you want to do. Get it down to four seconds, and then the field goal ends the game. And if the field goal wins it, I don't think we can really argue. I don't think we can say Notre Dame were unlucky or Notre Dame oh, deserves no. a win. No, not, not the way uh, they played in the second half and uh, got careless with two interceptions, and those were big plays. So the final play, what may be the final play of the game coming up, and it looks like it's going to be a 34-yard field goal. The kick is up. It's on its way. It's good. It is good. 24-21. With just a couple of seconds left now, Penn State, the Nittany Lions, they've come from behind. They trail 14 nothing after the first two possessions. And they think they're number one. Don't know if you'd agree with that, John. Uh, yes. I don't like the idea of having to kick off. I would rather if I walked in and said, I just won the game. You never know what will happen on a kickoff. 
Well, just one decent bit of coverage on special teams. There's poor old Chris Zorich playing through pain and uh, a guy that's got a bright future to look forward to, but uh, you can see him blowing hard there. There we go. You're absolutely right. You call it to the second, John. There's four seconds left. Enough time for the Irish to do try and do something, but uh, they look a beaten team to me as we see some of these pictures. This looks like a team that knows it's blown it. Uh, yes, uh, and of course the Penn State probably won't kick the ball very much in the air. It'll be a, one of those uh, that they'll roll on the ground. Well, it's uh, do or die time now for Notre Dame. And what a, what, if you can just feel a sense of de deflation in the stadium. There's 59,000 people here. It's the last home game of the season. They came to cheer their boys onto a national championship. They knew it was going to be tough. But they expected to beat the Nittany Lions and the sense of anticlimax and anticipation. It's as if the whole season has, has fallen apart for the Fighting Irish in one half of play, ever since the rocket went off. And here we see the kick. And as we see, there's absolutely no chance for anybody to do anything in the final couple of seconds. And this one is history. Penn State have beaten Notre Dame 24-21. Just look at the scenes of jubilation for the Nittany Lions. We have to say something about Joe Paterno. They lost the first two games of the season and everybody said, what's wrong with Penn State? After this win, they're probably a top 10 team at bowl bound. Oh yes, uh, you have to say that it's an excellent job of coaching and bringing a team along. And he utilizes every particular player he has and their particular talents. Now, yeah, Joe is one of the all-time great football coaches and this is one of his great wins. Well, certainly a great win here. Penn State have beaten Notre Dame 24-21 here at Notre Dame Stadium. Out of the window go the Fighting Irish's championship hopes, but next week they've got to win again to make sure that uh, they get themselves into the Orange Bowl, and it's another tough one, the USC Trojans. That could be the biggest rivalry in college football. One o'clock next Saturday, or Sunday morning to be specific. You'll be able to see that here live and exclusive on Screen Sport. But the field, Notre Dame, belongs to the Penn State Nittany Lions, who've come to town, they've come from behind, they trail 14-0, they trail 21-7 at the half, and they've come out 24-21 winners. And really, where does this leave Lou Holtz's boys now? Hard to say. Of course, they've got that big game next week against USC. They can't afford a letdown, but they're bound to have one. Well, it's all over here. Penn State have won 24-21 from me and Wayne Harbin and from our special guest, John Ralston. John, thanks for being with us. It's all over. We'll leave you with the highlights. Bye-bye. Cool Thank you, Nick. My pleasure. With Bettis in the middle, Sean Davis and Waters on third and two. And it's going to be topped off. Good cut back by Waters! Touchdown, Notre Dame! Was that a hole off the left side or what? Oh, Ricky Waters. 404 yards and that big game against Tennessee and he picks up just where he left off. His eighth touchdown of the year. And still Notre Dame was second and two at the Penn State 13 and that's the second two. You pick up eight on first down, you're going to beat somebody. You usually beat them bad too. But look at the hole, Brooks. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Oh, they look strong today. Oh, it's going to be third and eight for Penn State now at the Irish 32. Now, here's the down that's destroyed Notre Dame all year. They get teams in third and eight and yep. can't put them away. But they're in a blitz here. Baker reverse. And Sackis got Smith open downfield. He's got him, and he is in for a touchdown on a great catch by Terry Smith. It was just a great individual play by Sackis. They faked the reverse. Notre Dame was in a blitz, putting pressure on the quarterback. And Saka puts it right there, 32 yard touchdown pass. Just failed in the catch ball last week. The Meyer knew he was going to get hit by Richard McKenzie. He stood in there through the pass. 50 to go in the quarter. Throw another one. Go down the field. The Rockets out there. Just overthrown. Oh, he wants that one. He knew that was six.
16 now. Homer, the only setback. Right out throw. Good strike. And a pitch to Sean Davis for a first down. That's one of the best pitches he's had all year long right there. He's rolling left on the run. Rolling to his left. Perfect pitch. Now Derek Brown splits wide up oh, to the top of the pitch. We haven't seen this all year. Second and nine. Inside water. Really drilled it. Well, he did. That was a cross. 